Oh, hello. Ashley Johnson here, your 26th Tavern Keeper. Woo! And welcome to our very special First Sorted Derf. That's Four Sided Dive. So I thought I'd put a little spin on it. <laughs> where we will be covering everything that went down in Downfall. This is going to be such a juicy episode, and I am so happy to be here reading this teleprompter. I mean, just look at me. You can tell that reading a teleprompter is my absolute favorite thing, along with saying complicated words correctly and conflagrating totalitarian majocracies. <laughs> Speaking of which, the incomparable Brennan Lee Mulligan is here Woo! to Mulligan. tell us Woo! why he is so damn good at destroying flying cities filled with jerks. <laughs> Allison Jaffe played as Caduceus's goddess, the Wild Mother. I'm so good at reading a teleprompter. I played as Pike's goddess, the Everlight. And Laura Bailey played that bitch that ruined Vex's family in campaign <laughs> one. Nice. What the feck is up with that? Well, we are gonna find out. But first, we say goodbye to something very special. The C block. Aww. Or, as it was recently branded, more sided dive. It was a good block, a proper block. It was messy, boisterous, and often had nothing to do with critical role, much to the frustration of our viewers, but not tonight. Since we have so much to discuss with Downfall, we will not be doing a more sided dive for this episode, which means no games, no fuck arounds, but yes, there still will be a consequence for the Tower of Inquiry, but out of respect, <laughs> oops, out of respect for the block that gave us so much a tribute. Remember the memories, Jerry. Four-sided dive, block C. Goodbye, C-Block. May you be hastily shoehorned into the third act of our hearts and memories. Welcome to Foresighted Dive. Let's conflagrate a totalitarian majocracy! Woo! I'm gonna go see hey. the Inquiry. 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 <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> Welcome back. Let's begin the night with our open discussion segment. What the fuck is up with downfall? What is up with downfall? Oh, oh. see, that's that's a good what's, that's what's, a good little was play it? on words. The begin on, uh, that's the beginning of <laughs> like then, a and then a graphic of two arrows. One goes up, one goes down. It's just like some so I married an axe murderer beat poetry. Yeah. What is up with down ball? <laughs> what goes Whoa, up man. must come down. Character creation. What was oh. it like, you guys? You were what there. What was it like? Hey, you were there. Well, tell me about it. <laughs> it, was, it was it was rough, man. Can we jump into the number one thing that I think folks the 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 question? This was the hardest thing to wrestle with in terms of character creation. Doing a split party of betrayers and primes 
or doing solely primes. And I feel like this is an insight because I've seen some folks be like, obviously you, every one of these characters was fucking awesome, but I've seen people like that were really guessing, oh, we're gonna have a split party. And we ended up with all primes because I set a bar. I set a little bar when we were doing character creation. Uh, and for folks that are, are watching, it was, well, I really wrestled with it a lot because I was like, I know how fucking cool it would be to have some players playing betrayers. A there. lot of the players mm -hmm. wanted to play betrayers. A lot of the well, players wanted to play betrayer players. gods. Uh, I didn't want to be a betrayer. Yeah, I always like to be good guys, though. There you go. And really, it wasn't anything to do. <laughs> it wasn't anything to do with bad or good guys. It was that I really wanted. I was. I think that there is a thing that you do when you've been jamming for many, many years, where you know that there is stuff that is really shiny and really, really fun to think about. And then when it hits the table, it lands like a lead balloon. And one of the things I was worried about was someone being like, I'm gonna be, ooh, I'll be Bane, the Strife Emperor, or I'll be, you know, I'll be this character that has this other stuff going on. And then you get there and you go, oh, I have a totally uncomplicated relationship to destroying the city. I'm basically here antagonizing the people who are playing prime deities, and I'm just kind of kicking it for three episodes. I am a full Statler and Waldorf in my own campaign, heckling the characters that actually have a conflicted relationship with what's happening. Mm. And that was my big fear. So when we were doing character creation, I was like, uh, I was like, anyone here can play Betrayer Gods. My only bar all set is, do you have a vision for playing a betrayer god that gives them a relationship to what's happening that is as textured and complex as the one you have for a prime deity? And as we went through character creation, it was mm. everyone going, oh, the, he had the no. point of view. Yeah. No, yeah. it would just be sexy for a minute and then I'd get bored. I think yeah. Nick, brought, Nick brought a NPC. really interesting take on, was it the? the crawling King. The Crawling King, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. but. Um, I, it was just funny because everybody, like when, when we started it, you had us all pitch like three different gods, like mm -hmm. let's see what you're thinking and then we'll see how they all kind of mesh together and what yeah. kind of relationships form. And ev like s almost, I think all the dudes pitched being a betrayer god, mm -hmm. like as their number one. Mm -hmm. But then as it got talked about, it was like, oh, but, but, but. but maybe, but yeah. Maybe, yeah. yeah. They but were I think there's like this, this glamor to being like a baddie with like a good, you know, like, oh, but you're not seeing the heart of it or like they're just misunderstood yeah. or something like that, which has always been, that's like the number one choice in RPG, like in video game RPGs, when like the research is done, everybody wants to play the, the bad path, but then turn them good. They want to be the anti-hero. Yeah, yeah, totally. I, I, yeah. I just wanted to be, I, I'm always a big fan of like, of like a, a Spike or Cordelia, like not to use the, but of like just being the one person who's kind of, which you managed to pull off perfectly, and it's uh, and like in hindsight, it was like, oh yeah, this would have been, it would have been playing an NPC. That was my fear. It would have been just just being there, going, oh, look, you're being a hypocrite. Look at this. Look at this. And but like that's not that's yeah, not interesting. You'd be sitting on the back line doing support moves. You'd be, you know, it'd be like again, it would be. I'm sure anyone would have knocked it out of the park. But coming out as a as a Spider Queen or a Lord of the Hells. And stepping into it and and being like, ha, ha, you think you're good, but you're not. I'm gonna go back to eating my sandwich. You know, like, <laughs> yeah. and, then, and then you're sort of like, which is very fun as an NPC, but that's why NPCs are not spotlight characters. No, because, and, you and, know. and there are some there are some really interesting conversations to be had there with the betrayers of, about how they feel about the split and the this is not fair. Yeah. I don't feel like this was really appropriate at all, but like that's that's a different game. Yeah, mm. uh, and there was also a certain degree too where the, we had two mission briefs here, which was not only to depict the fall of Aeor, but also to depict the fall of Aeor as it is being witnessed by Bell's Hells. And so that was another sort of thing that I, when I was like, oh, do we want like to focus on prime deities? And it feels like for where campaign three is at, any revelation about the betrayer gods, you would probably walk away and be like, yeah, they really hate mortals, good, good point. Yeah, they, they kind of want the world to burn. As opposed to the revelations that can be had about the prime deities, which feels way more um, crucial to, to be like, I really need to figure out how I feel about the gods that theoretically you know, went to war to save us. That's the, that's the, the sort of like the thing that is the, the prime conversation, no pun intended. 
I mean, this goes on the night. The next question here was what direction did Brennan give? I remember one of the things that you said. You were like, these characters have the most backstory yeah. of any characters. And another thing I feel like when I talked to you, when we had a Zoom, a meeting, and when I, I had decided on, after, when we all sort of figured out what we were gonna play, and I was gonna play the Everlight, and I was really kind of struggling with like, I don't know, I feel like it's boring to play. I was trying to figure out how to play good felt boring. I was like, how do you make that complicated? complicated? And you said something, I mean, the whole, it, you, that whole meeting just blew my mind because you just went off on all of your wonderful thoughts That's and right. advice that you have. But um, you sort of made this analogy where you're like, well, why, why would it not be interesting someone who goes into battle and they're the person that sort of lays over the grenade? Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's someone that's technically being a good person to take care of everyone around them, but there's a lot of complications in that choice. I fully subscribe to, I, like, Ursula K. Le Guin, you know, the thoughts of, like, the banality of evil. I, and as someone who, who studied ethics, and that's, like, my, I feel like, creative hyperfixation is the difference between right and wrong and what we mean by that and what cultures mean by that, is uh, the motivations to do evil things are, I think, really understand. I don't think evil is complex. And you know, you see, it's very funny. There's a lot of like villains in pop culture that I don't see as being good representations of what villainy is. Where, you know, you see something like Thanos where it's like, I snap my finger and we need to free up more resources. And you're like, Snap it and make twice as much resources. <laughs> you know, yeah, like yes. you have a thing where you're like, I don't know if you thought this through, big guy. Yeah. When in reality, <laughs> when in, yeah. sorry. When in reality, <laughs> when in reality, you have situations where you have situations where, I mean, I'd be snapping all day. Room temperature superconductors, <laughs> nuclear yeah. fusion, bang, bang, boom, wow, pow. Um, uh, universal healthcare. <laughs> um, but you, you. Uh, um, in reality, the villains of the world are motivated by fear of death, fear of loss of power, greed, like very mm -hmm. simple primal urges to be like, I only care about me and the things that are mine. And you go yeah. like, that's, yeah, that's what, that is what it is. It's yeah, very that's bad. That's, that's bad. bad. That's, that's bad. That's what bad. bad. And there's, and you're not going to get a big, you know, like, and the nature of evil is I want stuff and I want your stuff. <laughs> you know, yeah, like, yeah. that's not, it doesn't, it doesn't feel like as interesting, but I think it's a realer depiction of what it really is. And to me, good is endlessly complex. Yes. Like, yes. Mm, totally. That's what sort of blew my mind because I was like, yeah, good is a little bit more complex than than I think I was. I was thinking, but this whole this whole game, and even now, and when we finished and playing through it, I think it. I mean, it's amazing that you studied ethics because it totally makes sense because I feel like this whole game was just about what feels right or wrong to each person. And I didn't feel right about much of anything yeah. that we were doing. And just having to wrestle with that, it was, yeah. It was really intense. It was really intense. And there was a lot of, um, like you said, there's so much backstory with these characters that there's like that hope and also fear that you're not gonna do their backstory justice, you know, yes. because there is so much lore behind all of the, the gods that it's like, oh, there's so much to take on here and I wanna be able to play every nuance of that without, especially with the matron, without giving too much away because there's so many secrets around her history. Yeah. And, you know, you had a heavy task. Yeah, and yeah. we had a lot of conversations. You and I had a lot of conversations, and me and Matt had a lot of conversations about it as well because there's so much about the matron that hasn't been revealed to us as players. And he, you know, he likes to surprise us still, you know? So he was like, okay, I don't want to tell you anything, but I got to give you a little bit in order to like, help you out here and then like you and I were like, what if, what if, what if? And then I was like at Matt going, what if it was this? And he was like, uh, uh, yeah. 
Get you can you can think that. Just don't say it out loud, okay? <laughs> well, that head nod. Yeah. That I head nod. Like, I felt that I head nod before. Choice. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna play that. I'm not gonna play that. Don't worry. I won't say it out loud. <laughs> it's so. It's so great. Though. I mean, I need to, to to your point about what it felt like playing through this. I've said this before, but I will say it here in this four-sided dive where we're talking about the series. What you guys did was impressive as performers, as storytellers, on a level that I don't know, for people watching it, you all made it look easy. You played three different characters in the first episode. We had an extemporaneous fall from grace of- Which nobody knew like what exactly it was gonna be. What is nobody knew. And was like, sitting there just going, going, okay, oh, we're, shit, apparently going this, on? no one told me there was a, there was a loop on this roller coaster, awesome. here we go, <laughs> woo! And then suddenly you're playing not only the gods, but also playing distinct relationships between mortals and the gods. Laura gets thrown a curveball in episode two where like, oh no, the straight up god? Yeah, okay, oh, okay. Oh, sure. great. Shoo, and suddenly we're there. Everyone's playing, these, and then you have even a distinction where it's like, you have the Everlight who's truly like, maybe I'll just be a mortal. Maybe I'll just be a, a like this life is nicer than the one I had as a god. You have like Asha who's like, oh no, I'm fully subsumed into the essence of the wild. The wild mother is calling the shots here. Oh yeah. Like, and which is honestly closer to how the betrayers are running their mortal avatars. Yeah. yeah. I noticed that Boy, for sure. Boy, I found that really interesting. Uh, like there was, there was a lot of time I was sitting there going, boy, there's, I have, I, I, I figured out the edge, which is why I'm not over there. Yeah. Like there is only one decision, which which was she can't leave. Yep. Like Exandria, she is stuck there. Yeah. Like if she leaves, the nature goddess does not survive leaving a planet. Like like that is its own. So like, there was a lot of like, like one line away from being on the other side of this. And not to boil things down to alignment, but like the prime deities are not all good aligned. Right, like the Everlight is, but the Matron of Ravens is not, right? So you have these perspectives that are not all rooted in how do we do the most good for the most people possible. You have like Nashir, who's being like, I am here as, a, as the emissary of a lawful neutral deity. Who, Which took us by the fucking surprise. Wow. I yeah. didn't even ask you, because I'm sure you had so much like, in your brain of what you were gonna do, then, like yeah, all these relationship say. things, and then Nashir shows up and he's like, I'm not the lawbreaker. Oh uh, yeah. I am this fabulous child. I'm this fabulous yes. child. It was so yeah. good. And Nashir yeah. had this, and again, like when I talked to Nashir, I was like, uh, you know, with a lot of people I, ta I said, what made you choose your side in the schism? Because any of these gods could have been prime or betrayer. And I remember Nashir talking about the lawbearer being like, there is no sentimentality there is no sentimental love for mortals, but we do owe them. We made a contract. You don't get to start the test over halfway through. We decided to create a world together and we're still doing it. And I was like, that's a, that is, that is a perspective that would absolutely put you on one side of the schism and absolutely let you uncomplicatedly destroy the city of Aeor, right? Mm -hmm. Where you're like, it's like, no, I remember we even came up with some Matt approved like, divine laws and that, that like the law bearer was setting out. And one of the, like the first one was like, the gods are unimpeachable, which is usually the first thing that any code of laws does is number one, this code of laws is the code of laws and it has authority because it has authority. Like you have a little <laughs> you can tautology read it. <laughs> yeah. right here. Like, like first rule, rules matter. <laughs> Second yeah. rule, like uh, in that, but in that, that like in terms of what felt right or wrong, as we started this, that document I gave all of you that had all these like mood board things on it, none of them were feel good. It was like Saturn devouring his children. It was like Lady Macbeth with the blood on his, it was Oppenheimer staring away. It's the Wesley Snipes from New Jack City, like holding the gun and crying. Yes. And this, we said right away, like this is a tragedy and a divine horror. You guys are gonna be playing, this is the gods taking the action that in my opinion, in the lore of Exandria, is the darkest moment of the prime deities. For for nothing more than, than I think, like you know, the, the initial thing with Matt was looking at this lore and being like, they called a truce after a hundred years of war? And it wasn't to like figure things out or divvy things up, it was a pause, it was a timeout to, protect themselves. And I was like, that's 
who wants to die? I don't want to die. But we understand the priorities of the deities, which is, let's be clear, rule number one, we're going to survive, right? And you all, that, so I want people to know that you guys all going into that had these things. You know, I think Walter White was like another figure yes. on the yes. on the mood mm -hmm. board. So everyone walked into this knowing this is about the darkest moment in the ancient history of these gods on Exandria, and the feeling of going through it, especially knowing like for me too, it was like this does not end on a note of triumph and celebration. And part of that was talking to Matt about the handoff of like, this story is not a story that ends in triumph and celebration. It's a story that ends in horror and anguish and a kind of divine nausea, I feel like, that then we emerge in front of Bell's Hells and Ludinus. And that's really the like, that's why this story had to end on that feeling of, <gasps> It felt that way. Yeah. Oh, us, uh, so what did we do? It felt awful. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And I, I feel like all of the, so much of it didn't really fully, I mean, I knew, I knew what we were doing. We know the story, we know what happens, but I think it didn't really, full, like when we hit the third game, I was like, Shit. <laughs> I could see it on your face too. You were like, what? A I want to make different. Mm. Can we go back? Because I, yeah. I have can other things that I want to do. I just want to save the bar. Yeah, just yeah, the, bar. Just the, the, the bar. bar. Everything else. The bar. Eh, fuck everything the else. Bar. The bar The bar that stays. Was so cool. The, the guy in the door. ZVX? Yes. I love, love him. I love him. Woo! <laughs> yeah. 4X, the little, the bartender and all the, uh, well, and that's the. Oh, the, that whole sequence was so, so wonderful. Great. So completely unexpected. Like everything yeah. else had been leading up and then you, we walk in the bar, it was like, oh, I love it. I love it here. Well, anytime you have totalitarian government, you have to have a sexy speakeasy. Yeah, that's, right. Yes. That shit. Yeah, yeah yes, totally. Absolutely. Um, what happened to Cabaret? <laughs> Yes. I love when Alan I Cumming it really I was well, well aware. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that scene where Alan Cumming spins around in a door and then yeah, opens up and there's a pocket scene. dimension. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> I love that. Um, uh, well, hey, were there character goals here? Were there character goals? Yeah, like, wait, what do you mean? It just says character <laughs> goals, question mark. So maybe like, how would I interpret that question? Were maybe there just like, were there goals? things that you wanted to uh, achieve or things that you wanted to, what's the word that I'm looking for? How you saw the God and how you wanted to uh, have it be perceived, maybe? Is there a better well, way to ask this question? Mm, I, I think it's good to show that, I mean, I, as I perceived the matron, you know, Death isn't bad. She she doesn't look at it as as a. It's not a sad thing. Death is inevitable. It's it's gonna happen. Um, so I didn't want to have like sadness over the fact that this was going to yeah. occur. It was just. Where where did I the feel, souls of Aor go out of curiosity? Well, just, I, I just I putting remember, that in out in the world. But I was, remember you know. in the first campaign, which spoilers if you haven't watched it. Um, when we do talk to the, the gods, like we went and saw the Dawn Father, we went and spoke to, right, we spoke to the Everlight, we spoke to I, the goddess of knowledge or the knowing mistress. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I know, Alexandria. I, <laughs> I know what our we did. fucking gods are called, okay? Um, <laughs> and like seeing the souls, there were like souls that we passed by and stuff. Like, oh, yeah. I think Matt called them like, Maybe I'm just totally making shit up. Pearls, right? I feel like, I, like yes, pearls I remember on the shore, too. like yes. endless grains of sand. Yeah. I was talking to Nick Marini, who his portrayal of the Dawn Father and the Dawn Child, and kind of seeding, like that that last scene where he sheds Aiden as as yeah. the Dawn Father, and you watch the beginning of a Dawn Father that in modern Exandria is much harsher and sterner, and some kind of naivete or optimism dies in downfall. I don't think the gods, in this, there's a great thing that all of you did that that the gods fundamentally changed when they left the eternal palace and had to become real. And I think that all of them becoming mortal 
change is a part of them as well. Mm -hmm. And I don't. I think that the Dawnfather is not unaffected by the passing of Aiden and the the idea of like, oh, that optimism did not come to pass, right? But Nick was mentioning a specific, specific thing about death, and it's the one argument because I think for me, I was like, this is I, to me, it's all about the solidarity of the gods and the horror of being immortal and looking up and being like, the Lord of the Hells and the Dawnfather have more love between them than either of them I think has for me and and knowing that and the horror of that uh, but the one thing I think Nick brought up that was interesting was he was like he was like in the physical cosmology of Exandria souls pass to an afterlife mm -hmm. based th either on worship or the actions they took or who knows what, you know, that's a question for Matt of exactly how that all breaks but out. They pass on. They pass on. And they, 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 we've seen the souls of those who have passed into another life. We don't know what happens to the gods when they die. Exactly. We don't know. Yeah. We don't know what happens. So but that, at the same time, wait, that brings up a whole other question. If the gods, matron shepherds them on and they pass to the realm of whatever god they worshiped or you know, to another if they didn't worship any god in particular. And those gods harbor those souls, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Danny, do you have like... Oh no, I was sneezing and trying sneezing. really hard to not sneeze into Got my it. microphone. <laughs> <laughs> and Sorry. those gods like harbor those souls. Yeah. Those eternal souls. What happens when those gods get killed? So in a way... What happens, what happens, those to, those souls? Souls? What happens to those souls? Did that, the, does that end all of the souls that had... But also like those little pearls that were on the shore, yeah. they just like, oh, well, there was, <laughs> like what are they well, doing? There was there was a process before out. the gods got there. There was there was a process True. for these souls. It's a process. We don't exactly know. It's very and that that too the, the fact that yeah. Matt has established mm -hmm. that mortal life existed on Alexandria before the gods, which really takes us away from. It's, I was saying this before we started, it's more like the Aesir arriving in Norse mythology and showing up and being like, hey, a lot of stuff is already going on. We are largely, like not with obvious exceptions, but largely culture gods, gods of crafting or law or things like that. And we are here to establish a new order on an already created world, right? And there's a lot of mythologies that line up with, you know, Aesir Vanir, Olympians and Titans, mm -hmm. uh, uh, the, the Firbolg and the Tawatha Dedanan. There's a lot of different world mythologies that have that, like, you know, in Celtic mythology, there's the Book of Invasions, which is like, which is like, there's some gods, new gods show up, beat them up, drive them under the hill. Now you're fairies, congratulations. <laughs> um, and it's, uh, you know, there's, there's a lot of things in the Exandrian cosmology that are not directly one-to-one -one with, you know, a given understanding of, of the divine. Uh, but what I love, talking about the character goals again, I feel like my big fist pump for the Matron of Ravens was when the gods were talking about mortals and you had the law bearer, or you had the emissary, and you had the wild mother, and the wild mother's like, fuck them up, I'm hungry. And then you have the Everlight and the Dawnfather being like, we have to do a better way, we have to take care of them. And the matron, as the the only one who started mortal, was like, dog, they're adults, they can take it. You know, like, like you know, very like the matron, as this weirdly, paying the most respect to these mortals, being like, they're not afraid, they're, they, they will not, they will not love you for doing that, they'll resent you. Yeah. Like, we are, like, I am a product of the age of Arcanum. They want to kill you, man. They, they think they're ready for, for round one. Yeah. You know, like, or, or and honestly, round two, right? They think they're ready. And I think that there was something in the Matron as that neutral, morally neutral deity of just like, this is the reality of death. I feel like that was a, an actualization of the character. Being like, in a weird way, even though this wasn't the exact words, it was like, pay these mortals the respect of going to war with them yeah. yeah like of like they're they're ready you know like I don't know it was interesting I I, I will say that at, at when we were setting up characters I definitely had a, a distinct feeling about what the wild mother thought of the, the matron yeah and boy it shifted so fucking hard over this game <laughs> like I, I I'm I mean, willing to believe that the, like to definitely that was the wild mother going oh okay oh. your family now yeah I I don't know if I can quite get over how you ended up here ever but okay your value is clearly well, you, don't know yes. you don't know that's don't the know problem how. nobody knows nobody that knows. is that is the I mean that is if, the more you think about how you got here the more it, it it's such a 
cosmic violation of another human yeah. being, uh, you know, so to speak. <laughs> and yeah, I mean, this is, and the Wild Mother is very, very big. Like the Wild Mother is the goddess of the big picture. That That is terrible. Yeah. And like going, mm. I'm missing a bit. I'm just missing a fucking bit. Yeah. You took sure it from me. Sure the Knowing Mistress. Oh. You, Oh, Maybe. for sure. Yeah. You, you, and I think the knowing mistress is secretly incredibly pissed. Yeah. You know, just, oh, yeah. What do you mean? There's a secret. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but the you and Nick each had moments as kind of the dual most nature god mm -hmm. of the primes. You know, like the wild and the sun. Each had a moment where you accepted the matron, which to me feels like if like the amazing thing that that can only come out through actual play, oh. where it's like, oh, we know that this is the downfall of Aeor. What we didn't know and what we established through organic play is this is the moment where the matron was fully accepted by the other primes as being like the end. Nick being like your family, yeah, like you are family, and that's a really cool thing to learn and an intense outcome. Um, or the, like the whole the the, the temple of the clays uh, of, of of the the uh, dust the stones and the clays was was entirely a conversation between the matron and the wild mother like that was a thing that was created because of that relationship yeah. and it didn't even, it occur to me going in that like I haven't <laughs> I really have done the opposite of establishing that relationship at the beginning of this game and uh, I was like okay now I absolutely see it yeah I have a, a point also for mm -hmm. Ashley talking about that feeling, especially in that third episode, where everything starts to pick up and you're fighting in the Factorum Malleus and you're there with Cassida trying to get the things. And there's this moment where you realize, wait, Cassida thinks that she's building the weapon to help us, but then we're here with the betrayers that we've already decided to work with. And they're like, oh, she just wants to kill us. How fun. And you're like, oh, how do I manage this? Because she thinks she's helping because she Ugh. sees it as a war and it is a war, so but it's kind of not a war, not for us. Yeah. And you're suddenly, and then we, it's I just you. Want to trap them forever. It's you and the Lord of the Hells. <laughs> yes. I just want to trap them forever. Okay, come on. Uh, come on. Get over it. Um, uh, but you have this, this horror in this moment. And I think what the, the thing I wanted to say about how, the, to the reality of that horror and how uncomfortable that was. And listen, all of the, like, there were so many moments on breaks where I would come out and see Abu or Nick or Nashir, and they'd be there like, <sighs> and I'd be like, <laughs> you're nailing it. <laughs> you know? yeah. You're like, like the, I was like, this is, this is a, and it's a type of horror story. Again, it's not like Freddy or Jason horror. It's moral horror. It's divine yes. horror. Yes. Right, mm. it is the definite moral horror of oh, going so right of of it's it's the it's the flood it's Sodom and Gomorrah yeah. you know the, the things that we even referenced going in it's the the there's that that line from the book of Job where where it's Job's like you've ruined my life and basically the the poetry is beautiful but it's like oh did I where were you when the world was made and there's this 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 f fundamental feeling of like oh I'm just so small and is that yeah. the whole point. That I'm just so, I just don't get it. And Cassidy's point about understanding, all of which is to say in that third episode, the dawning horror on the Everlight as events ramped up and ramped up and ramped up. And suddenly you're like, my family, something's going wrong in Hawks Hill. And Arcadia is working with Cassidy. And the factorum is the fight's going bad. Um, the ultimate horror of that, that I thank you for depicting, because I think the, the nausea of the Everlight wanting to have made a different choice depicts the fact that we make our moral choices in a chaotic, moving world. And the doom was written when Milo Kaust, uh, who was an illusion the entire, t uh, the entire time, uh, when Milo Kaust, spoilers, uh, why are you watching this? You know this is spoilers. Um, uh, when Father Milo Kaust goes, you don't have a week, you have tonight. That's when the that's when the moral doom of the Dawn Father and the Everlight was written, because you don't make your ideal moral choice in stopped time. You make whatever scrambling, panicked, fearful thing as you wonder if you will die here, if the Factor of Malleus will turn on and zap you first. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Fun. Fun times. I do want to know. Yeah. Your take on the Wild Mother yeah. was so different and wonderful, but different than I ever would have thought it would have been. Yeah, same. And I loved it. Thank you. What was that? The, the fuck, fuck was that what, about? What the fuck that was that about? Um, I'll, I'll, I mean, like on the surface, it was definitely me taking the Wild Mother of Caduceus and going, perhaps I didn't make myself clear. 
Uh, <laughs> uh, it's actually a lot of it comes from from a thing I heard. I'm trying to remember who said it. It was it was uh, it was someone. Uh, uh, um, uh, Stephen Fry, actually, uh, I, I, it was a thing I, I used to, because I was, I, I knew a lot of hippie kids growing up, or yes. like, or yeah. you know, a lot of hippies growing up, and the, the whole notion of like nature worship was always one of those things, especially since I was a teenager. I took uh, teenage uh, umbrage of because I was surrounded by it, and you have to be angry at something, uh, and the part of it that, especially as a city kid, uh, I got was this is this is awful. I don't like being in nature. Nature is terrifying. There are sounds, there are smells, there are things that jump out of the fucking bushes at you. I don't like this. Um, and I'm not built for this. Uh, I really wasn't. Uh, and eventually what, what uh, um, the, the phrase that I eventually heard out of Stephen Fry is, is if you remove human intervention and remove consciousness, nature is basically every life form on planet Earth living a life of pain and starvation until it dies violently. And that is what nature is, is starvation and violence, nothing else. That is it. And thinking about that is really fascinating, which is, and especially in a world where nature's not doing that well. And when nature is doing well, there can be bound, like nature's, nature's relationship to people is very different. There's bounty and there's food and there's beauty. But the minute that starts getting askew and like, you, you know, once, once we dial it back to, to before we had civilization, it is starvation and violence. It's such a well thought out way to think of it. I, yeah, I'm the same way, Ashley. Like when I think of the wild mother, my brain goes like, growth and mother earth and this yes. like beautiful like green floral you know she has all, flower feminine all, all that green and floral is gone right yeah, now exactly yes. it is Thorns fucking and been bramble. wasted there is and nothing on this planet i, I just like yeah my brain wouldn't Loved have it. gone there and oh. you like opened my eyes as we were Thank, playing i mean yeah, and, me too. and and she definitely needed to get rid of that part of herself because that is a lot of who she is is this love of this place and so becoming that wolf was also a lot of removing, I mean, there was no anger really. I mean, the, the only anger, the only human emotions that really l l bled out of her at any point was uh, anger at her spouse. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Was the only place where she kind of, that part of her personality would ever leak out, but there was no anger, there was no hatred, there was no, it was just, and like even in the, in the killing, it was just, I need to eat something. Yeah. yeah. It was always very utilitarian and practical. It's really nice to know that even in the primal depth of raw nature itself, your spouse flaking still pisses you <laughs> off. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh. Just so much. Like, what? We had a plan. Uh, I've been here for you 30 know. years. You know ahead of time that it was not going to be? Nope. <laughs> Fucking no. No, I did not. Uh, uh. I, I was watching your face, and you were just like, I was so angry. <laughs> You're going it was so off. great, but it's like, but like, yeah. I could feel, I could feel the how fucking how dare, dare you? you? Yeah, Nashir had an amazing pitch, which was essentially Nashir was like, I think the law bearer has already internally, by this point in the calamity, th thought of and supports the idea of the divine gate, even though we're still like, I think some fraction of a century away from the divine gate being created. By the time Aor is dropping and the gods are making the decision of like of like, okay, war's going bad, planet's choked, also they're making a weapon to kill us, we're all gonna become mortals, like half of us are gonna become mortals for a second, and, we're, and the law bearer's like, this is a shit show. Yeah. This is an absolute shit show. And, and kind of having that thing of like, okay, I could incarnate as a mortal, but then aren't I just another fucking monkey in the circus? And sends the emissary as already like, I think I need to keep on a hard part of this line. Uh, it was great. It would have it would have later been a really good pitch to the Wild Mother of like, now that you've been through this, let's have an honest conversation about backing off. Yeah. Which she would not have done. Yeah, yeah. totally. Uh, speaking of mm. Nashir, our three guest players. Mm. Let's Baby. go. Nick, Nashir, Abu, holy so cow. Good. Ah. So good. What, 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 just, to, I mean, just the, the ugh. I loved, I loved every moment with them at the table. Talking about, we were talking about before about the banality of evil and the complexity, interestingness of good. Every one of those 
guys pitching their prime deity was I feel like I was pumping my fist as I was like, yes, good is more interesting. As every one of them, like, I remember Abu being like, oh, well, someone's gotta be in it. Can I be an Aormaton? Yes. And yeah. it was like mm, so perfect. So mm. perfect as he's like, and we, I talked a lot too, cause we haven't seen the arch heart a lot in the main campaigns, but you go to that lore, this is the guy, it, Abu played the character who is responsible for the cosmology of Exandria because there was, there was peace, there were primordials, there weren't betrayers or primes, there were just the gods. And it was like, okay, I think the primordials are a little bit pissed that we're granting them spells, but, I, but we've cooled off. So we're just gonna keep granting them divine spells. They'll pray to us, we'll get worship. It's a little chaotic with primordials, but we're fine. And fucking the arch heart goes, I'm gonna give you guys treats while they're not looking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> You guys are great. You guys are actually great. Yeah. Oh no, we're all going to war. No more primordials will be left active on Exandria. Half of our, or like almost half of our siblings are confined to hellish torture planes. Oops. I don't know, I thought wizards and sorcerers were pretty cool. Uh, <laughs> it was, it, yeah, it was, it, it, I, I could not believe what an interesting take on that character. Yeah. And and every note that I was hoping uh, he would hit got hit. And, and even the guilt of it and that whole, that conversation between the two of you is just like I've I went oh, back and hello. watched it like six yeah. fucking times. It's so that good. That was one of my favorite so moments. Cool. Oh yeah. There was there's like yeah. a handful that I would love to yeah. we'll get to discussing, yeah. but mm -hmm. that was that was one of them. Oh my just God. saying like him maybe like having the guilt of it. Yeah. Just mm -hmm. showing for just a second. Because I love that second. he always had this little like glimmer in his eye. You know, he just always had like a smirk of, I enjoy this. Like I yeah, know I'd this never is show it. Yeah. This is hard, but look what we've done. Look, at, I'm so proud of them. His, in his sort of libertine, sensual yes. aura, his charismatic aura, the idea that he saw an opportunity in this plan, which was a very like intense, covert, we must not die, we must stop Aeor. The fact that he was like, oh, can I have the people that we were the gods of create me <laughs> and be like, yeah, they built, look, they made me. And like having that, that joy. And I talked to him about it a lot because he, in, you know, everything comes out differently in play, which it should, that's why we play. But he had this great thing where he was like, he was like, I don't think, he's like, I think I have to respect the hustle. I love the fucking, I love it. They can kill us, what the fuck? We can't even seem to do that. Like, that's sick, I love it. And, uh, uh, there was a moment where I said, cool, what's the, I was like, if there's a moment where, like, like and I said too, I was like, hey, if you want to pop off and fight for Aeor, you do, like, the, the lore is unclear, everything's on the table. If you want to, at the end, go, no, Aeor should have the, you know, the, the, the scene from Kill Bill where Michael Madsen is like, she deserves her revenge and we deserve to die, right? I was like, if you want to go get there, go for it. And he was like, I think, there is in the in the way that we are showing the primes at their their sort of darkest or most villainous that Saturn devouring his sons the Oppenheimer of it all like he's like I think that the the fun in games and the the frivolous like I think they've done well for themselves when the barrel of the gun turns on me I won't want to stop having fun and that thing that he mm. and he said that before we even played the first episode mm. and I was like. Oh yeah, because all the philosophy goes out the window when the gun fucking points at you and you go, I don't want to die. I don't, don't want to do that. Yeah. 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 And I was like, oh, that that is a hypocrisy that if you don't understand, is the most primal understandable hypocrisy. It You're like, so good. it tastes so good. Oh, they oh. have every right to destroy us, except for right now. <laughs> and then, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 That was one of the, like speaking of that, that moment between he and I, when we were doing that, before we started playing, you know, we went around the table and we spoke about like, what is your feeling on this person? What's yeah. your feeling on this person? And like, just kind of like cement that as we, before we, we ever played that first episode. And he had said that the Arch Heart was one of the, the only gods that actually liked the matron. Yeah. And it was like, I'm so proud of you. Look at what you've done. You were able to to take this gift that I've given you and accomplish such great things. And my take on that was, fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> fuck you, man. Yeah. Like, I don't want to be placated. You know, like, and for that to be her impression of him, yeah. to say like, 
ooh, but I deserve more respect than for you to look at me like, yes. look at my little kid just doing such good things, you know? So that that moment in the in the bar of like, you want, you want it to end? Yeah. I can do that for you. That that came from that realization of his. Yeah. And the fact that we all understood that you were the only player, that you were the only person at the table who we could actually, I mean, when he said, that there, who else am I gonna be honest with? I was sitting there going, oh God, that's true for all of us. Yeah. yeah. Oh no. Yeah. Oh, everything else has just got too much history and too much, there, there's just too much there, except for you. I love that it like, I, I, it was actually Marisha that pitched me be Raven first, like the Matron of Ravens first. I was like terrified of her. Well, because of all of the relationships that we've had in the previous campaigns with her. And I I was that Raven bitch, you know, I've always had that kind of thought of her for everything that she's done to our characters or has happened because of her. And I have this like, I just love her so much now. But you did, yeah. you, you played her with the coldness that you knew of her. Right. Like that was so present. That scene with the planetar in the bar, where he has oh. this heroic, he's like, if, what is he, he's, like, he's like, if you wanted us to serve you, you should not have made us good. And slits his oh, throat, yeah. thinking no, that he's over. protecting the secret. And then I was like, we're not gonna roll dice in this next scene. And you're like, well, he's dead, right? So he's mine. And suddenly going, oh shit. And then he's before <laughs> the matron and you're like, yeah, you can actually talk really big when it's mortal avatars. And now you're here at the end. And just being like, yeah, he gives it all up. And the fact that you at every moment, or, or Cassida showing up and being like, I, I'm trying to help. And you're like, lady, where is the fucking elevator? You know, like, you're, yeah. it's just like, it's like, I don't have time for your life story. I'll yeah, see yeah. you on the way out, lady. Like, you're, there's a line, there's a line, yeah. get in the line. Yeah, yeah. It's gonna get long if you don't go right now. Oh God, that was so, I had no idea either when you were like, then you're in, Matron's realm, when I was like, oh, I'm like, I am the matron. In Here this moment, it was so fucking amazing. Full oh, circle so cool. on the I other know. side. And all I could remember is like every moment that Matt had been the matron and like seeing that and get to, to get to be that I, was so cool. I kept thinking of, of like when we do the recordings for the, for the series and when I was watching that, I was like, oh man, I can see a lot of, of that coming through right now is like, as, because that's been, that's been, uh, I think mostly you have been doing the the, the matron, or no? It's a uh, scratch. Yeah, I've been doing. No, who has been doing? Have I been doing scratch for matron? Yeah, I think so. Maybe. Yeah. I so it's just like whoever's I can, who, I can, I can hear the exercise in there. I'm just like, <gasps> yeah. <gasps> oh god, we've been in a room hearing that voice not be Matt for a while, yeah. which is really interesting. I've loved. I loved how when we had that episode two and that split up happened, it was everyone's sort of bestie, right? Like beauty and death go together, like the arch heart, who, and like the ultimate expressions of arcane magic. We have the Everlight and the Dawn Father who go to the hospital and yeah. healing the sick. We and five more episodes. I wanted to, I wanted and, one yeah. of them. Yeah. There are the Wild Mother. I know, we I could know. Have, there have been so many, the, the amount of episodes, we could have sat in this story for so long, but the, <sighs> It was so, and also that the the splitting up, talking about you and Nick, and just how well you guys played off each other. And Nick did such an, I mean, I love Nick so much. Wonderful. Uh, I loved he had such good delineation between the Don baby and the Don father, and really yes, like, I feel like more than so. anybody else, like he really had Aiden, yeah. you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, he really had this sweet, and he, Nick talked about it too, he was like, optimism. He doesn't want Aeor to be hurt. And he talked about, the, he was like internally, we never ended up playing the scene, but he was like internally when Aiden prays kind of to himself. But the, the Dawnfather for whatever reason wanted to give that mortal avatar more agency and more like live a life, you are your own person, but you carry the weight of the sun within you. Yeah. And also that kind of cool thing of like, the power I have will destroy you when it's unleashed. So I'm staying back, I'm letting you take charge. And Nick had talked to me and that, that Aiden was very much like, if we'd ever played the scene, it was very much like, we can do this. We can, we can unmake the weapon and, and get rid of, of the knowledge of how to make it, but leave as many of the people as possible. We can do it. And he was like, and I think the Dawn Father's response is like, was, was always gonna be like, I wish you the best. 
and a time will come when that uh, we have run out of chances for that way. And this this father son interior relationship yeah. of like of like we can do it perfectly, and a voice being like, "I love that you think that." Yeah, you know, like. Gosh. Uh, uh, but you guys were so, the yeah. I feel like you and Nick were so great, and even the, you know those early scenes. But our sweet little good aligned light yeah. gods, yeah. Uh, the two who really thought it was going to end any other way. Yeah, yeah. Or just the, the 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 hope of just we can end this with the least amount of bloodshed as possible, and we can we can do the right thing and make sure all of us live and get rid of this and and I don't know it, it, it. you guys as from as from a weirdly to the degree that comedy and tragedy have things in common you guys set yourself up for the most pain mm -hmm. yes because nick walked into this with his full chest in the first episode saying they think that we're not united and that will be their downfall and we yes. will show them a different way, which is the comedy version of being like, I'm never gonna get hit with a pie. <laughs> it's never <laughs> gonna happen, which is the thing you have. Like, I, I really <laughs> applaud the job you guys did because for this to be heartbreaking, you need the gods who say, we can do this a different way. Yeah. Literally knowing it's in the book that it doesn't happen a different way. That's right. the trap you guys play. And I think for people who are watching this, like the 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 pain, the like the the discomfort and pain of playing a character who's like, I really think Orpheus is not going to turn around this time. <laughs> I really think this time Atlantis, <laughs> it's going to stay above yeah. the water. Yeah. And <laughs> being like, oh, Aww. poor Nick and Ashley going and just just face first dead sprint into the wall of reality. Yeah. It's uh, heartbreaking. Yeah. You yeah. guys did such a good job. Because even so, even playing it, it was, you know, I know what happens, but, you know, we don't know the specifics of it. And there was a part of me that was like, well, maybe we can like, maybe we can teleport everyone out before the city crashes. Yeah, out. yeah, yeah. Maybe there's and everybody some thinks way. they all died, but really. Yes. Yeah. Yes. No. <laughs> and it just felt awful. Like me, Ashley, I don't like leading or following. <laughs> I don't like leading or following. So Does that fair. mean I, li I like Very to be fair. unaccompanied and stationary? <laughs> Correct. Yeah. So it was so hard. I was so stuck in so many just having to make a decision of what to do, of just like <laughs> each path that I'm looking at and each decision, none of it ends well. Like someone will get hurt. People are gonna die. Uh, one of us is 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 gonna be hurt. Like it felt. I I didn't want to make the decision. Can I ask God, a question? Yeah. So in the yeah. in the last moment, like you guys had talked at break yeah. about you were thinking. I kind of overheard it. Yeah. <laughs> about you were thinking about like leaving. You were like, I don't yes. want to do this. I don't want to do this. It feels wrong. It feels wrong. And you were saying like, is it possible? And you said, anything's possible. Do whatever you want to do. The only established lore is the prime deities and betrayer gods work together to destroy Aeor. So having heard that, I thought we were going into that final moment and you actually were going to be like, I am going to go be with my family, my children who I have raised and I love in this mortal life. I'm not going to doom them to die. I'm going to be with them. And then you did it. You came yeah. and you helped us in the fight. Why? What was the yeah, choice? Yeah, I didn't did you... think that that was going to happen either. Because I was like, I don't want to make this decision. I'm going back. I, I started a family. But then as we were playing through it, I was like, well, that's selfish because the whole reason we came here was for this. Right, mm -hmm. and these are my family. And this is my family. This is my eternal family. This is we've been family so much longer, and it. I mean, no decision felt right, and someone was going to get hurt. And I think in that moment there was so much of like, I. I feel like the Everlight, and even like thinking of the backstory that that you know I had thought about, and having the family. I was like, this was such a selfish decision. Because to, to she have knew a family it's family to begin yes, with. To have a family to begin was, with, because at some point 
she was going to have to abandon them. There, there was a moment at the very beginning, I, we, I briefly mentioned this, where it, we were moving a little fast, where I, where I was gonna just walk by and be like, how, you are an idiot. Yes. How fucking dare Which would have been, which was yeah. amazing. It's just it's walking true. by and just going, and not only, you, and you said you'll be right back, you fucking liar. Yes, which so much like, of it, I was like, cruelty. why am I saying these terrible things and <laughs> well, lying? I will say, we have to be a little bit careful here because if it's cruel to have a family when one day you will have to say goodbye, if that's true, I'm, we're in all no. in trouble. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're I'm, all in trouble. Well, Specifically knowing that you're going in and like, and like, yes. like this particular is like, you, this was a very con like it was a very it was a very complicated choice, but I feel like for for the Everlight and how much she I feel like you know something we talked about I feel like she loves the mortals the most, and it's just everybody she just loves yeah so hard and so deeply and wants everybody to have a chance and a second chance and, and really got feel cared for, enveloped with that mortal life right and yeah that kind of just took over you also do well there's a, there's a bunch of funny things here if nick was here i would ask him cuz aiden so clearly we kn we know that the everlight's followers are destroyed by yes. the lord of the hells yes and then the dawn father comes in and is a cleric of the everlight so two of the so gods sweet. end up being clerics yeah. of the other gods right and the um but within that too i often thought as i was looking at nick and i was like that's so sweet and so kind, and also. Yeah. And also. Every fucking time. And also, is there something to the fact that the Everlight shows up with this young Aiden right next to her, and if Aiden's not around and not helping the Everlight, does she maybe get the call and not pick up the phone? Yeah. yeah. You know? Mm -hmm. That's a, the like something that like, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta about. keep an eye on her. Gotta yeah. keep an eye on her. She's gonna lose her nerve. Yeah. You yeah. know, like, because I think we had talked a lot about the Everlight being like, this life makes a lot more sense for what I am yeah. than being a god. And at that point, after having all of her followers just decimated, there was so much of like, well, what's the point of me being that anymore? Life's and not this is fair, is it? Life's not, yeah, life's not fair. <laughs> and then it was just like, and then lying to the kids, and then I was yep. like, should I be honest with them? But then I was thinking of them like being in therapy and talking to the therapist and being like, <laughs> my mom said she's a god, and then being like, oh god, the ego on her. Yeah. Like, you know, it's like I didn't know how to, how, I was like, so, I've made all of the wrong decisions. Well, but first of all, you do have that beautiful moment of sending that weapon yes, back yes. to Haley and Topher, and these two, Pervon is there, who Look we know Pervon. doesn't die. Pervon, oh, Pervon! We know, and I, in my head, I was like, lore, lore, Pervon doesn't die here, he doesn't die here. And so when you sent the weapon, I was like, Haley and Topher, blah, demigod yes. status, and fucking take off. And then we have like Asha's soldiers there helping as well. I loved uh, Pervon playing, yeah. There's a there's a bloodline of the of the Everlight now on uh, running so around yes. Alexandria. Yeah, so cool. And I think that there's a, but the, the, so like the Everlight, and then also at the, at the very end, the last moment, you know, to, to sort of, I'll, I'll drop a couple lore things here now too, which is number one, we never got to reveal it. Uh, Adam Arcadro and the Magistry and the rulers of Aeor yeah. were aware of the Society of Primes. So Cassidy's secret group <gasps> of people that were like doing the weapon to affect that, they had already been compromised and were, so in other words, if you had been, if there had been a moment where the prime deities were like, wait, let's you let's do Cassidy's plan, you were already gonna find that the rulership of Aeor was aware and the, the wizards that had sympathies with the prime deities were accounted for, they'd been infiltrated by spies and that Aeor already was like, they're brilliant engineers, let them keep working and we'll kill them when the project's over. Um, Whoa. Uh, so that's Fair. one that never that never got revealed, but um, uh, numbered. So so Cassidy was in a lot of trouble even before the the gods showed up. Um, and then number okay. two, um, the whole moment of the arch heart, uh, the whole moment of of uh, the arch heart and the um, Selena's last wish of trying to yeah. like send that all out. So that was after. So it was that was sent to I think non, she had sort of basically said like the magistry, like the, the wizards of, of Aeor, but teleportation had already been disrupted Shut by down. Cognosa, right? Um, uh, except for the wizards who teleported in, uh, which was a short range teleportation and it worked. Uh, <laughs> don't, there was, they, <laughs> magic. And it, it, it made sense, it worked. Um, and then, um, don't question uh, it. Uh, uh, but that moment of, of her trying to, to get the knowledge out 
and then sudden and then suddenly like the arch heart being like which to me is there's this moment in weirdly Barry the HBO show where the guy's like I'm going to I'm going to tell the cops and Barry's like why did you say that to me because it means he has yeah. to you know like yeah, that's just good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. really good the and then um that last moment with the Lord of the Hells. So the Everlight mm -hmm. s sends the weapon to her kids, and the Lord of the Hells has the scroll that Cassid has made of the knowledge of the Factorum Malleus, and you can either shoot him or this knowledge, and you have this guiding bolt and hit. Yeah, no way she would shoot him. Yeah. No way. Uh, so the Everlight does make some big choice. The Everlight is the one who actually, the Everlight is the god who destroys the last remnant of the Factorum Malleus fully takes the moment before Asmodeus, before uh, the Lord of the Hells can teleport away, uh, takes that moment to destroy the knowledge of the Factorum Malleus forever, or so we think. Um, Wait, Brendan, I don't think you finished your thought about the wish. What happened with the wish? Oh, sorry, yeah. the wish. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Thank you. Uh, uh, <laughs> just talking, <laughs> about, that talking about those lore wrap-ups at the end, that wish was really about Selena. A lot of that third episode, I think, was realistic depictions of choices made in panic and horror. Yes. And Selena's choice thinking, oh my God, they're about to destroy the weapon. The air, you know, maybe like the Aerovox has already been compromised. Maybe they have some other way of stopping it. So I'm just gonna send the knowledge, send like a seed of the knowledge to every wizard in Aeor. And then in the moment she does it goes, oh, I've doomed the city. Because now the arch heart is so even if even and at that point I don't even know that the prime deities were not on the path to, to destroy the city already at that point. But that certainly was a moment where the arch heart had you know the 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 emissary was exploding. He had this giant anti magic bomb that was going off. You know, cord was uh, sorry the uh, the storm uh, bringer was overhead and. The arch heart basically had to make this decision of what happens to this explosive energy and goes, well, this weapon now lives in the mind of every like mortal wizard in Aeor. So we gotta destroy all Oh my God, mm -hmm. what if when I bamfed out that kid, Hallis, mm -hmm. what if I let the seed live? Cause <sighs> he got like a little tidbit even though he's a kid. He was a kid. <gasps> Never know. Did he know what it was? Did he tell anybody? Um, <gasps> is it been passed that down? Is. Depends on who that kid is. Generation to generation. What did I do? Yeah. What did I do? Oof. Um, well, yeah, you, it was, you gotta lock it down. Oof. All this is to say, the Everlight made a lot, took a lot of big swings in that episode of getting the weapon to the kid, uh, the, and then the, the heartbreaking moment of Cassida being, having her soul close, but still being one of the people that knew how to make the weapon, and still having that moment of like, and also, I, I don't know, the idea of like, if. She, seeing what she's seen, would she still want to help us if she came back? Ugh, that's why That's why I was just like, I don't know how to talk to her. <laughs> to try there's, to like. There's no fixing it at this point. No there's no fixing it. I was like, there's, just there's I don't no know, manipulation fuck up. at this point. It's not yes. what it looks it like. I icky. swear to God, this isn't what it looks like. It it, well, it really yeah, is yes. though. This is not quite. Shit. What it looks like, and I, I, I am so sorry. In a, in a fun, in a fun back and forth that I was having with Nick specifically about this, the when I was talking about like, like what, what is modern Xandria going to do? What is Bell's Hell's going to do? And we were talking about do you stand against the gods or do you have sympathy for them? You know, Nick said something on the lines of like the gods had to stop. They were going to, they were going to kill the gods. And I was like, correction. They were going to have the power to kill the gods, mm -hmm. and there's every reason to believe they would use it. There's every reason to believe they would have it. But I would say I want to be the, the thing I said is like for my whatever the moral calculus is, it's important to understand. Mortals are not even allowed to have the potential to harm the gods, mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. I was like that that matters to me. Yeah. Uh, stay in your lane. Stay in your lane. Yeah. Unless, but except for you, you're except the except for me. Except for me. I would also like to discuss, mm -hmm. last but certainly not least, the prologue. <gasps> and we discuss oh, yeah, it a little bit, but like oh, 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 fractals of light. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I pitched that to Matt. I talked to Matt about that, and I was like, I was like, I think this really matters. I think it really matters to see this, to understand, um, because. The, I was like, I know that this story is going to end 
with the destruction of Aeor and an alliance between the Primes and the Betrayers. And the second you have an alliance with the Lord of the Hells or the Crawling King, we've said something so profound. What's so funny to me is I feel like if I was a little Exandrian in this basement of Aeor watching this recording, the most important information happens in the space in between the prologue and the arriving in Hawk's Hill, which is just the truce, the truce. And to me, that truce is explained by the prologue. It's explained by mm -hmm. yeah. the, like, who now, these people are. Which is such a bummer that Bell's Hells doesn't get to see that. They don't see that. Is that bit. established? That's established. Yes. Bell's Hells doesn't see the prologue. Bell's Hells doesn't see because that wasn't recorded what happened in the city. after the fall of Aeor. Oh my So God. they only see from the moment. <gasps> only what was recorded in the city. Because that gives Spoiler. so much. Oh, was it? Did we spoil it's that? Okay. It's fine, but yeah. Barely. It's a, just a, a, it's a little baby Bare, spoiler. It is a baby spoiler. Gotcha. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. <gasps> yeah. So you don't see you don't see those no. sweet little infinite nope. no. ephemeral, unconstrained, no. totally untouched by Well, yeah, the the um Yeah, that was really important to me. And the idea too of like how did, how are these beings a family? And it was sort of like the Lord of the Hells is just one of an infinite number of possibilities for what this proto being was. And also the like torture and hellfire uh, is the, the thing that is the, like, how do I phrase this? The idea of hellfire and hellfire are about as different as two things can yeah. be. We tell stories about horrifying shit all the time, and that's fine because an idea is an idea. And so the idea that all these betrayer gods in their idealized forms, it's like, no, there's no there's no contradiction here. We're all family. We're all ideas floating around. We're all these motes of light, these endless songs. Nothing's become real yet. Everything is possibility. Um, and yeah, the, the heart, that, that's another thing to me of like divine horror is that idea of the fall the, of Arcadia, man. It was yeah. the fall of fucking Arcadia. Yeah. The minute I was in there, I'm like, I was that was that was the minute you began that. I was that was my first thought was, oh no, we're going to have to become things, aren't we? This is not going to go well. <laughs> that was, was seamless, by I the way. Yeah. The way you did that. Oh, thank, thank you. Yeah. It was so impressive. Was so cool. Oh, thank you. It was fun. Yeah. To take the the actions that they did and turn them into what you become well the oh, cool. that's the that's the i mean when you open the box schrodinger's cat is now alive or dead and when you become real all of the things you could have been are dead mm -hmm. and i mean that's like if you want to get into like philosophical horror that idea of like as you grow up all of these paths i didn't take which vastly outnumber mm -hmm. the path i took fall away and I become more and more specific. And it was it was the first real decision that that each of us made. It was the first including the betrayers. It was the it was the first actual decision of their right. creation of was was the like now this is who you are forever because you decided to decide something. Uh, and it was it was fascinating watching that happen of God. just like and and kind of accidentally with with us yeah. yeah, it was just watching that kind of become. Oh God, we're we are actually making ourselves in this very bizarre way. Matt is so fucking cool, and the idea when I pitched that to him, <laughs> he's just so fucking cool, man. And the idea of being like, yeah, d hey, do do you mind if we all get some spray paint cans and go to the very beginning and tag a wall? You know, like, yeah. Yeah. and every single person's tr like every choice, and especially like. The idea of like, cause you were not playing your own little mode right. of light. And the idea of playing something that looks back and goes like, what is that? And, a f and all right from terrible. the beginning, a fascination yeah. oh. with. Oh, I, I kind of would have liked to see what that part was. Me too. I also love the, the, the wrinkle it throws mm -hmm. in Prime versus Betrayer, mm -hmm. that the Betrayers are doing these very heroic things. They did. And your yeah. Prime is, is like in this moment of chaos is just suddenly fascinated by the specter of unbeing. Yeah. Um, and sweet, oh, the Everlight, just holding on to uh, uh, Lord of the Hells and... Uh, yeah, just <laughs> trying to protect and save. Just trying to protect him. and save. 
and and the, the oh, I love the tick. Yeah, they're sweet. But what did you do? You hugged him, right? Mm -hmm. I was just trying to surround to to be a a, a protection or a shield. Yeah. Because he was just being burned so badly, yeah. and healing him at the same, trying to sort of off-put the, what was happening to him. Yeah, and that his, the, like, like, his first experience of the real was pain, right? Yeah. And your first experience Ugh. of the real was trying to help somebody, and mm -hmm. it's like, and then, oh, Tal, that choice you said, is this because I wanted something? Uh. I, oh. Is this because I, you said in the is prologue? Is this because I wanted? Is, I is this because I wanted something? When yeah. I rewatched really watched it again, I feel like I didn't hear that, and when I heard it, I was like, "Oh!" Oh yeah, she's she's got damage. It's so Sorry. it's so <laughs> cosmic because because when you said is because I wanted something, yeah, there's a plain English description of that, but I think the that operational, it yeah, it's not the operational is not on wanted. It's not like oh, desire's bad. No, no, is it because I wanted something? Yeah, not everything. I wanted something. Yeah, we right? didn't have a something yet. We didn't have a something, and, and there was no such a, thing as something. Now we have a something, and and that is, and, and something comes with nothing, and, and <laughs> something comes with a lot. Of something has got borders. Yeah. And, nature, oh no. Nature is vast. Yeah. But it is not infinite. No. <laughs> there's a fixed number of trees. There's a fixed number of leaves. There's a fixed number of bugs. The board is only so big. It's something. Yeah. It <laughs> you got something. I did, for better or for worse. Shit. <laughs> Hey, everybody. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> There's something on the teleprompter. Awesome. It's time for a question from the tower. We're doing the tower a little differently in this special four-sided downfall. Woo! Done. The tower has been temporarily replaced by Kerplunk. <laughs> Each little marble has a number written on it, and we're going to pull sticks until at least one marble falls out. Then we read the number on, see there's a little umbrella on the teleprompter and it keeps getting hitting. Yeah. Then when we read the number on the marble aloud and Danny reads us the corresponding question. But if multiple marbles fall out, we pick one marble and leave the rest. Got it. So do we all go I up I feel like I was reading now? it and no, had what, no what idea what I was just saying. What, but, okay. Because at the end of the show, whoever made the most marbles fall or made the whole thing go kerplunk, they get the consequence. The what? The consequence. The consequence. There There's are consequences to our actions, Brennan. Don't you know that? I'm about to sprint right. out of this studio. <laughs> Brennan, <laughs> I'm about to pop up there. and be get the first. Get up there and go get it. Not here. first. <laughs> go get it. Number one. Number one. What is going on? So you gotta, you gotta, you, See, you pull, pull a stick and then give it a quarter stick? turn. I don't know okay. how this works. And then he gives it a turn and then another person goes out. Yeah, you pull a stick and then give it a quarter turn. That won't help you. Wait, but how do you know? Just no, pull, it's okay. I pull, one, one, I pull a stick and then give it a better. turn? We all need well, to go up there because it's gonna take more than one stick to get a marble to fall. You pull a stick will? and then, okay. well, I'll, I'll, I'll show you how to. Keep pulling until one or more marbles drop. Yeah, but does do we each go again, up there and we each pull? Yep. Yeah, so all of us okay, have to pull, go. So okay, okay, okay. One, but a, one at a time still, one at a time. Oh, all yeah. right. Okay. Well, you go next, Bulu. Wait, I'm so confused. <laughs> he, he, Brandon has to make one fall. He's okay. gotta make a marble fall. Okay, we, we must make but a single marble. Or a bunch of them, it doesn't matter. If a bunch fall, then. You have consequences. Then, then I. Make a whole bunch fall, Brennan. <laughs> We're gonna count them up at the end uh, to see. Wow, this is hateful to watch. Little motherfucker, I gotcha. Oh, hey, one marble! That is perfect! Oh, Don't come Ooh. for me, okay? <laughs> I am fucking ready. Oh my god. Come on, we wait, get so that now you have marble? to turn it? Now you gotta get that marble out so we there can we read go. that question. Oh, All right, it Actually, is number it seven, and Brennan is number one, so now I'm gonna move this. Here, I'll control the twisting so okay. that it's one less thing you guys oh, have wait, to do. Oh, wait, so what does that Nope, this one goes for Brennan. Okay. There we go. All right, but counts for me? Yes. Y'all run a rigged game. <laughs> oh, we know. <laughs> oh, we know. Don't worry. If I do it again to anybody else, those marbles will be for them. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Not that I'll mess up again. <laughs> so this is from uh, at indoor underscore Selkie on Instagram. Oh, mm -hmm. I love Selkies. Can you talk more about your safety practices? What do you do to protect each other's mental health and emotions when the themes you're exploring in game are potentially triggering or potentially a nope topic for someone? How do you do this without spoilers for the players? 
That actually did come up when we were doing character creation. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. um, to decide like how far our choices, like what themes we were willing to explore. In the conversation about the betrayer gods, I was like, hey, some of these gods are really fucking nasty. Mm -hmm. And there's a distance when they're NPCs that is gonna make it a lot easier to play through this game. Um, the number one safety tool, well, first of all, safety tools are awesome. I hope that if you are watching this and you have a table, you are using them at your table and you're discussing with your table what to use. Um, I would say the main safety tool here is getting on the page at the outset about what the themes are gonna be. As funny as it is, a mood board is a big fucking safety tool. Yeah. Comparisons to other media and what kind of effect or tone or mood you're going for are a huge safety tool. Um, you know, I think if I had my, I think there's there's amazing tools like lines and veils and having discussions and, and X cards and having like, okay, are you okay check? I think for us, a lot of us are professional performers and so we know that there can be intense emotion at the table and that's actually a, a positive for people to have those experiences. Um, but I think that proactive is almost always better than reactive. So having a proactive discussion about what you are going for and clarifying what you're trying to achieve is I think going to end up creating a lot more safety and trust at the table than saying, who knows what we're here doing, but if we stumble into a problem area, here's how we react to that. Does that make sense? Like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I think having really clear like these are the lines on what we're trying to achieve uh, is huge, and then lots of check-ins. Like, yeah, we had lots of check-ins. Yeah, we yeah. did. How's everybody doing? You okay? Yeah, well, yeah. And, and we're at least I'll say for the, for the cast, where you we're at the point now where we can make eye contact and figure. Well, on the rare, oh, the very rare occasion that anything's weird, it is very okay. I got that. Uh, yeah. Yeah, we're we're aware enough after a a long time, I won't say how long uh, it's been. Uh, <laughs> a long time. A long time. But we, uh, and, and that, and that uh, setting up the expectations at the beginning of the game was, was you know, especially for a game like this. Yeah, yeah. Very, very I also feel like off of what you said, because we are performers, I think there is also that level of, I think we like going, I'm all, I will speak for myself, I like going to those dark places mm -hmm. and being able to explore those emotions that maybe I don't feel comfortable doing with in real life, uh, com comfortable enough to explore in real life sometimes. So sometimes when you're performing, you're like, oh, I can hide behind this. Well, in, yes. in any acting class that you've ever taken in your entire life, one of the first things they drill into you and they drill into you hard is get comfortable with being uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. Just, yeah. you, just yeah. you, can't, you can't coast through a career as an actor going like, oh, that feels weird. I don't want to audition for that, that one. Yeah. Like that one doesn't. You're like, no, 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 no. If you wanna, if you wanna get the work, you gotta, you gotta get real good about being in a place that doesn't necessarily feel great. That's yeah. one of the reasons that I love this medium and acting in general. Is like in real life, I hate conflict. Hate it. I hate feeling bad. I hate being sad. Like who doesn't hate that? And so I, as Laura, do my utmost to stay positive almost all the time, you know, like that's my reaction to things. And so it's nice to have a time when you can just fucking be a shithead or you can, you can argue or you can, you know, try to make somebody else uncomfortable. I like that. Yeah. It's really, it's finding players and a DM that are comfortable exactly. enough to go there with you Trust. or not. Yeah, Trust. and trust. Yes. I think I think that's a really significant thing because I've, I've had a lot of questions over many years about safety tools. And I think that safety tools are excellent. And I really hope that as people utilize safety tools, they don't utilize them outside of the context of trust, community, building relationships. There are like, I, I think that there is a, um, there's a lot to be said for knowing people over a long period of time. I would not have been comfortable, I think, coming in and running this game if I had not 
come in and run Calamity or come in and played in the Elden Ring one. It, like, this would not be a great, and I think that it's okay, people sometimes like, want to go to a really dark place. That's great. It's okay to say, oh, I don't want to do that with this group of people because I don't have a level of trust that's there. Sa even if you have safety tools, I think it's okay to be like, actually, in addition to safety tools, I also need community. I need to have a group of people that I have spent not just quality time with, but like quantity time with. I need people that I've like dicked around on my phone with, like that we've been around each other that much that you kind of have those relationships and that kind of sense and of And you know that, yeah. you know if you're gonna cross a line with that person. Yeah. Like, yeah, and you know that other people at that table have your back, that they're gonna protect you. Yes. yes. And, and everybody understands, again, everyone under, understands what they're going for and understands the, the positive feelings that come from going into these places. So everyone is, is no one's trying to, to be a shit about it. Everyone's here to have a good time. Everyone's here to have a good, bad time. <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> yes. Like, it's really. We literally said this is tragedy and horror and, you know, it was all of the, the you know, when I looked back at it, that first document that was like setting the tone for the game, every single depiction of a character on that mood board was someone having a rough one. A real bad day. A real yeah. bad day. <laughs> Uh, and it was like such a. a we knew the assignment. I always, yeah, I always yeah, yeah. prefer tragedy. Yeah, the assignment. Yeah. yeah. My my DVD collection is is very sad. I really thought we yeah. were gonna be able yeah. to save the city. <laughs> yeah. I just really thought. Gosh, golly. Gosh, golly. We, just I, needed, okay. we just needed three nat twenties in a row. That's all. And that's all that was needed. Yeah, three nat twenties <laughs> in a row and a nap. There yeah. was. This is so. This has nothing to do with anything, but I just watched the Gene Wilder documentary, Remembering Gene Wilder, because mm -hmm. I love him. Mm -hmm. um, and he told this story that was so sad. He was like, when I was a kid, my mom was really sick. She had a really bad heart condition. And he said the doctor grabbed my arm when he was leaving. And he was like, don't make your mother angry or you'll kill her. And he's like, I... So he's like, from that point on, I just tried to make her laugh, but then I, he said I wanted to play characters where I just had emotions where I could, could get angry and like let those moments out. Oh, wow. I found it really his, cool. His, uh, his, the, his performance in Little Prince, if anyone remembers him playing the fox, and he plays the fox I in, never in saw a, Little Prince. In an anyway. original, one of the many adaptations of Little Prince that, that was made, and it was so, it is an, it's an interesting ch chapter in the book, it is so tragic. And watching him play the, play the fox and this whole conversation between him and and the, the the kid is there's something haunting about it and I really God that actor there's Ugh. I don't like to you know stories are beautiful all on their own you don't want to be overly mechanistic and just reduce things to their utility but that being said I think that one of the things that makes me feel the most positive or in love with storytelling is just that. Life will give you hard feelings and bad days and raw emotions. And how naked and vulnerable and afraid I would be of the hardest days in my life if I had not had years and years of stories preparing me for those moments. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, that is such a wonderful point. Yeah, I really, I go like, oh, you know, like the, the day, sit, like sitting on a on a curb in New York, crying because I don't don't know how I'm gonna make rent, and I go like, boy, this is just this is hard. Like when Frodo had to take the <laughs> rent, and you go, you have that yes. moment. It's so it's so. Frodo had to take his it, rent it feels to, silly, to, the, to the volcano. But yeah. you know, the amount of times in my life, I've had times in my life, and again, it's like. You, you, the human, the human reserve of will and the power of the human spirit. I fully believe in that totally. And on top of that as well, there have been times where I look at that quote of like, you know, get, you know, like I wish the ring had never come to me. I wish I never lived to see, you know, like I wish these things had not happened. And Gandalf going, you know, oh, also do all who live to see such times. And you just go like. No. The, you no. just, you have those moments where you go, oh, that, like, I do need to feel these feelings. I do need to know what it's like to stand up and be wrathful. I do need to know what it's like when you have fallen short of something. I do know what it's, need, what it's like when you are betrayed, when you fall in love, when you are triumphant, when you are defeated. Oh, and, I mean, just, just I, having lived the, the occasionally way too interesting life, uh, watching in, in, in moments of, of real darkness, watching who handles it well and who doesn't. 
uh, is was always fascinating fascinating to me as a young person of like being this is really bad right now, and it's really interesting who is getting out of this okay. There there is definitely like I, I'm a deep believer in the in the triumph and tenacity of the human uh, human soul, but I'm also a deep believer in uh, survivorship bias. Uh, so yeah, I've seen a lot of like part of that is also that the people that were not did not prepare themselves go down fast and hard and do not get back up, mm -hmm. and it is it is interesting seeing the people who do get back up, uh, and it it, it uh, and some of it some of it not all of it often comes with I've seen people really attached to stories yeah. as a way of getting through rough times. That's how I do it. Yeah. Lulu, pick some sticks. On that horrid on note. That, on that sad note. <laughs> no one's ever gonna hit me with a pie. <laughs> <laughs> Did we say that on camera or off camera? There's that on remember. camera, I think. Oh, thank God. On camera. Okay. I believe in you. I'm not, I feel like you planned this, Brennan. Like you really looked at it and went, where's the marble gonna fall? Y'all wanted me to get up and, and, and go first, and now? I know him too well, he definitely <laughs> okay. did. Given the opportunity to cause drama. Oh, the red! Whoa. Oh, your second red. Very interesting. You're opening with Rossini's Gambit. Whoa! Do anything! Ha 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 ha! I'm a big fan of. This is gonna be one. This, this one's gonna, gonna be, be multiple none. ones. No, it's gonna do something. There you are. Oh, no, that's there you are. That's just one more than Brennan. Yeah. Well. That's true. Pick well. Pick one. Wait, wait for the turn. Number five. Number five. Number five. Can I turn it so that I feel the responsibility? Sure. I agree okay. with that. No, 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 go put it oh, yeah. Oh, we're, oh, we're changing up the rules. Also, no. we're, also, we're literally. I mean, oh, no, do you. Also, we're literally. Oh, no. Should we oh, always let change it up again? I need you to Just understand. No, no, no. Absolutely. My, no, when, I say, when I say things happen, Laura Bailey can do whatever the fuck she wants. <laughs> I'm fair. I'm going to use Danny. Danny always does the turn. All of you, are watching, this. All of you are watching this Who's at home. Who's the matron? You bitch? are watching. Who's the matron? This is a circus. This is a carnival. the rules. All right. There. But also, I'm like looking said, at Laura the, Bailey, uh, I'm looking at the teleprompter and it says have two to three people pull a block. Talison, you go ahead and I'll set this one out. Wait, we gotta answer this question first. Sorry. That's right. There's a point to all this. <laughs> I know. Could just play other, than just, other than masochism, there is impact and There is a... Arden B would like to know, mm. is there a non-magical item from your character's past that they still keep with them? Uh, you may answer for Downfall or for any of your characters uh, across the games. Brennan, any of your NPCs, or if you want to talk about any any old any old character let's you've ever like, played. Let's stick with Downfall. Let's stick with Downfall. Yeah. <laughs> Amaris's coat. Amaris's coat. It's really lovely. Yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah. it's yeah, not magical. It's not magical. No, but it's special and comforting. Just due to the nature of my character, not, I mean, not really. I, I, I also was trying to think, was it just, was it just uh, me and the Arkhart who had actually quietly built temples to themselves? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, 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 yeah. we're the only two who are like, I'll have a few worshippers, thank you. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> How can nature not have worshippers? Exactly. Yeah. Uh, which is why I have my little posse with me. Um, yeah, they're, they're, they didn't, they were not, um, really object oriented. They were not, other than their the staff, which yeah. which uh, there was not really. Even the clothing was honestly. You, it was because something had to be. They, they had to wear something, totally. and it was a gift, so they didn't even have to think about it. It was just. It was a thing bestowed upon them by a worshiper, and they're like, "That'll do." Yeah. It was. It's very. There was no. Uh, they, they they were aware that they were not long for this and that that was not what they were preparing for. Um, Certainly not to fall in love with anything. There was a great, I love that so much. And I love to, I mean, you had the crate and the wagons and the food and everything that was non-magical coming up, which I did really love in terms of like, the. I remember there was some great world building thing that an old teacher of mine had because someone pitched, um, uh, was like, and this is a city, and it's the city where they, the rich all live, and there's, they don't allow any of the poor into the city. And the professor was like, don't allow the poor in, who the hell washes their clothes? And <laughs> yeah. who's, who's feeding them? And he was like, rich people only exist be, because there's a hundred to a thousand poor people making them rich. And you go like, and I was like, oh, that's fucking, really true <laughs> and then yeah. you have like the so the idea of Aeor's downfall being uh 
people with grain, like a sun god with grain and a nature goddess with oh, fruit. Oh, and yeah, literally, yeah. literally was the, uh, I'm keeping a couple of these apples yeah. and just, and then literally just using that to, to crack the fucking, yeah. Uh, the, yeah, just crack the cement open. Apples. Um, <laughs> um, we and I, we, we had talked about uh, Matron just having like a cache of stuff. I didn't ever like take advantage of that, but I loved the idea that she had lived this mortal life before and probably accumulated a good bunch of shit that she just kind of stashed away. Yeah. And then that's when she was wow. reborn, she went, ah, yeah, that's right. I you John Wick did? Where you like, you opened up the cement at the bottom yeah. and opened up the case? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Did we ever establish that you were your own warlock yeah, patron? Yeah, we never, this one, that was the other thing. We never explained like how the classes ended up working, like the, the choice there. We, we had a long conversation because it was like, do you come back as a wizard? You were a wizard before. And you literally were like, well, I want, you were like, in her second life, the matron would want, her second mortal life, she would want to not work as hard as she worked in the first fucking yeah. life. And I was like, what? Like, the idea that Amira, as a little baby, just has a contract from the goddess of death waiting and be like, it's the, it's the most favorable warlock contract of all time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's like, like I'm you- I'm going to give myself. <laughs> yeah. going to, I like you I basically just created a trust of your arcane power, yeah. and you're like the beneficiary of this trust is me. Do do do. Come on, take care of this kid. <laughs> oh my god, she, she's granting herself spells. Um, <laughs> so I, I kept mine on this like the, the least magic humanly possible. I just wanted to be nice and nice and flat. Nothing. Unarmed Where combat. Where does she store yeah. all yeah. her stuff? Yeah. yeah, I'm not telling you. Okay, fine. Go and pick some sticks. Okay. Secret, secret. Hell yeah. Here we go. Pick your sticks. I hate See, all of we're this. screwed now towards the end. Yeah. Yep. Now Clearly I'm realizing you're gonna... I, should have, I should have picked way more sticks. Yeah. Well, that's well, yeah. that's the, that's the point of the game is that you're not supposed to pick. Sticks, yeah. But you started it. Is, so. Yeah. There you go. The whole thing is that I mean, it you, says you two go until a marble drops, and it depends on how many drop. Yeah. But someone's you, gonna you're gonna have to do I'm it again. We're gonna have to pull it again. Oh, oh shit! How many just How came many? out? Three. Oh, okay. It seemed like so much more. Yeah, didn't it? That, uh, <laughs> Twenty-six. Twenty-six. Do 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 do. You are the host. Do. You're running it. You don't have to ever. Pull I don't it have down. consequences. <gasps> So this is fun. That's not true. Particularly <laughs> was, for, uh, for downfall, if you're if we're thinking current characters being downfall. From Dress, which NPC from a previous campaign would you want your current character to meet? That's not fair. Oh. Thinking about downfall. So Ooh. which? who would you want your downfall characters to meet from a previous campaign? From a previous campaign, campaign. yes, sir. Wow. And again, you may choose any of your NPCs. Wow. Mm. Are they really NPCs whenever you're playing them? Like, mm -hmm. they're being pl I'm gonna shut up. <laughs> Doesn't the matron's gonna meet all of them eventually? That's, she's the only goddess who does. Oh, shit! Ooh. She is the only goddess, the matron's the only goddess who meets everybody. Yeah. Everybody else wow. picks and chooses their favorites. Oh, man. Part of Ash, Ash's issue <laughs> with everyone but you. Like in, like, in the whole of everything, or like the characters that we've played? I can't remember. Uh, and it doesn't matter. In the whole of everything. Oh. So who would who would the Everlight like to meet out of everyone? Our version of the uh, of, of the characters or, or yeah, the yeah current character, character. Okay. character being down. Okay. Oh, yes. Keyleth. Yeah. 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 Oh, like hopeful Keyleth. Yeah. Honestly. Or like. Keyleth been through some shit. Keyleth been through some shit. I feel yeah. like I feel like that would be a very. There, there's also a reason that Asha was Asha, uh, as Ashari was definitely. Oh, sitting on I was there. Saying, was there a connection with like Ashton? No, no, Ashari. no. Okay, 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 okay. okay. Yeah. I love that. So there was a very quiet, quiet, uh, a, a quiet like reverence there. Cool. Hmm. Yeah. Just name somebody hot. <laughs> I mean, I know it's one of my characters. No, I'm gonna no, no, choose no. it. I was thinking Yasha, Ooh. because I feel like she needed the most help, Aww. and I feel like she would want to be like, okay, let 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 let's give you a little bit more happiness and and care and comfort for a little bit. She needs a hug and a hot cocoa. She needs a hug and a hot yeah, cocoa. Yeah, yeah. So I'm gonna pick Yasha. Love that. What about you? 
Mm-hmm. This is so funny because it's like the it's mixture like of NPCs and PCs. Yeah. You know what came to me? I was thinking about it and I was like, oh, there's so many different, like the characters that I've played, tw- like if you think about them as, as the, are the, who are the characters that I've played more than once? So Pervon was in Calamity and in Downfall. Mm-hmm. Lord of the Hells was in Calamity and in Downfall. Yeah. And people will know this because of the captions. You don't know it yet. Bolo was in <laughs> Calamity oh, and in Downfall. Bolo's the oh, wait, greatest Bolo from Downfall? Calamity. The silver dragon was Bolo. <gasps> no! Bolo oh. was a dragon confirmed. Oh, shit. <laughs> Bolo was a dragon confirmed, yes. I'm so glad. I had, Bolo. there was a moment, so that dragon had the, the I'm a Bolo. Bolo. That silver dragon had that accent in the final battle. <laughs> and uh, also at the end was like, I, I had the moment that I think everyone else missed it. She was like, I die and no one remembers my name. And then died. Cause I was like, I was like the, I was like, I thought someone would clock Bolo in an earlier, more fun part of the combat. It is not the time to bring Bolo energy. <laughs> This is not, you know, sometimes you sometimes you're in a conversation and you're like, I missed my window to tell that anecdote. Yes, yes, yes. 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 all the time. That's all the time. Every, all the, every like, time every I talk. Day. Yeah, I missed my window. So the idea of the idea of being there and the ever light, like, my family and someone being like, by the way, you guys don't have context, but actually I was, I watched some crazy sh- I've been at two flying cities crashing. That's crazy. Right? Waka waka. Bolo. Second time is apparently not the charm. Buy the nickel for every time. Yeah. Who, would Bolo, uh, who, would, who would Bolo want to meet? <laughs> who would Bolo want to meet? Um, uh, not the Dawnfather. Um, uh, yikes. Um, but you know what I actually thought about was f- f- across those, those different uh, PCs, I actually, the thing that I think would be the most meaningful, the scene I would most want to see would be uh, an NPC that I played in Calamity. I think I would want to play Vespin Chloris meeting the Matron of Ravens. Meeting the woman who inspired his greatest failure and being like, I couldn't do what you did. I think I would I think I would want to see that. That's rough, buddy. Mm. Hey. That's rough, buddy. That's, That's rough, rough, buddy. Oh yeah, I'm looking at your work. Yeah, that no, that I see I, why it didn't happen for I, you. I see why it didn't happen for you. Yeah, you want to. That was her point. Yeah, <laughs> totally. She's yeah. like, yeah, I could have told you that. I could have told you that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but I think that would be just be very heartbreaking to be like, why couldn't just the, just the thought of why you, why not me? Why you, why not me? I think just there's something very, very heartbreaking in that. Also, and again, also because uh, Vespin was uh, total. Narcissist, megalomaniac, age of arcanum, wizard who thinks like, well, if she did it, then I can certainly, you know, like totally all of those tragic flaws. But fundamentally, his plan, he'd spent a lifetime, at least with talking to Matt, like in the, the mal convoker of it all, he'd spent a whole lifetime thwarting devils and was like, wouldn't it be great if the Lord of the Hells was not so destructive. Wouldn't it be better to get rid of one of these ancient evils and then someone who understands mortals would be in charge of the hells? Mm-hmm. Uh, which is not, which is a really, which is is a bad idea, but not uh, completely. I'd see where the heart is. The heart that, is not, ooh. yeah. So the idea of him meeting the matron from Downfall. Maybe if a more compassionate heard. person were flying this plane. Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. As opposed to the pilot. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe we just need someone nicer. It's like, oh, I'm okay if he's kind of a dick. He knows what he knows that dial to, he is. He knows how to fly it. He though. knows what that dial is, and he's a, he's a bit of an ass, but he, he does. He can land it. He does know the da- the dial. If not that, Pervon meeting <laughs> Vox Machina and being like, I want to tell you all the people that are named Pervon in my family. Um, <laughs> it's a very common name. It's an extremely common. <laughs> what Pervon? <laughs> Pervon. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uncle uh, Pervon, uh, my cousin Pervon. Pervon the second. Pervon the second. Uh, yeah. Bailey. That, that's it, yeah. What? How about you? Yeah. How about me what? Who would you like to meet? Oh, well, who would I like to meet? As, as the, mic. as I'm, the, as as the, the matron. matron. Early, early, not at the end, yeah. obviously. <sighs> Preview. Lewdness. Ooh. That's juicy. That's, 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 that's a sexy. good answer. Wow. That's really juicy. Damn. Maybe we can make that happen. Yeah. Maybe we can make that <laughs> happen. Maybe we can make that happen. Oh. Yeah, that's... All right. Thank you. 
indoor selkie, art and be, and dress. And if you have a question for our tower of inquiry, you can enter it <laughs> at critroll.com slash tower. Good it's job, time to good slide job. into the deep dive, <laughs> where Ooh. our wonderful lore yeah. keeper Danny Carr serves us juicy quandaries for our mind throats. God damn. Wow. That's a, I don't like the way that None was phrased. That. None of that felt good. I did mind not throats. like that. I was, don't want to answer these was, questions. Like it was written by Perlon. Don't worry, y'all already mostly did, so this oh, whole round's going to be like 15 minutes. Oh, <laughs> y'all yes. are, already Thanks. answered a ton of them. Open right, wide right. your mind throat. I'm stuck. Open oh, no, wide. Yeah, I'm stuck. Right. <laughs> that one's cool. I love that. Hey. The throat of the mind is the deepest of all. Um, we still okay. have so much to get through, so let's let's just oh, yeah. jump let's in. Start. let's start. Let's start, Talison. Okay. I'm going. I'm going with my right. with my spiky cup. All right, I should have brought my glasses. Um, what do you think of the theory that Ludinus is uh, Hallis? There's a theory. I was, there's a theory. There's I a thought theory. That. I didn't know that. Uh, I thought that. I feel nah. like nah. Yeah, nah. That would be so appropriate. I guess it's, it could be. I mean, it, I mean, <gasps> I mean, it could. Maybe. But that, but that was a fluke. I just felt like saving Hallis. Mm -hmm. I wanted, I wanted for the matron to show that spark that she gave to Vax. I wanted that moment of her being like feeling merciful, mm -hmm. and that's why I, I, in, I took him. In, in my heart, I hope it's not true. Yeah. Because one of the, one of my one of my favorite truisms of the world is that you is that you can't erase a there is no erasing a problem by erasing a city. You're just kind of kicking the can down that like this is not a this is not a system that actually works. Yeah. It's just kicking the can further down down the down the road and and so this was inevitably going to come back to bite them and not just because of one kid. Right. There's just it it, it it's just a it's not a way that actually works to deal with these things. So, yeah, I, I like the idea that it was even something else. Like, it was some other point of chaos. Yeah. Uh, so, that's mine. But, you know, we'll see. Uh, all right, I'll go. How was it for the Everlight to work with the Lord of he the Hills after he betrayed her? It was rough. It was real rough. <laughs> it really sucked, walking in and seeing him there. Um, but also because she's the Everlight, there's still love there. Like that's never gonna disappear of like wanting there to be a second, what she thinks is like a second chance for him to be, to give him redemption. In your opinion, do you think she has just like a bottomless well of love and forgiveness? That's how what I feel. That's what you I. Can't that's ever like, wrong her enough that she would say, "I abandon you." Yeah, I think to a fault. Well, I mean, yeah. if, if if it wasn't a bottomless well, would you be the Everlight? Is kind right. of yeah. Yeah. Would, you would yeah. be something else. Ever. Yeah. Ever. Goddess of the goddess Ever. of eleven chances. Forever. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Wow, you guys almost caught him. That the insight check and the detect thoughts on Arcadia, mm -hmm. right in that first scene in the chamber. Ooh. I was I was sweating. I was like. They're on to me. Shit, they're gonna be. They're on to me. Um, it was crazy. The yeah, the whole thing of of and the convenient timing of a castriel, the angel. So it was basically that the Lord of Hells had like bamboozled everyone earlier that day, essentially, like tipped off the solar. Like had, you know, there'd been like rumblings for a time, but it was like getting the solar to Aor, doing all this stuff, setting all these things in motion, and then uh, sealing. Uh, Arcadia, who, so that was the actual form of the knowing mistress that she had been living in Aeor for a long, long time, but just sealed her in that gem and handed her to the soul. So wait, that, I actually, Danny and I were talking about this earlier. Yes. So he was doing the illusion from the get-go. From the get-go. That's what I thought too. See, I got confused. I, I swear too. I thought you and I had a conversation where you said that he switched in the hospital. But no, 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 no. I, okay, that was a that was a lore keeper got confused moment. Don't, don't, I don't, don't, don't. All good. There was I, I spe <laughs> a lot remember, of info to keep in your mind yeah, throat, right? <laughs> the, yeah, my mind throat is full of information. Yeah. Um, um, <laughs> I hate it so much. I love it. <laughs> so gross. You wrote it. It was in your prompter, so now we're doing it. It's mind throat o'clock. Oh. Oh. Answer a question. Stop talking about it. Stop talking about the mind throat. <laughs> 
Francisco kind of question. <laughs> um, what was the main philosophy you wanted to imbue your god with? How do you think Nick, Abu, and Nashir would answer? We, I think we've, we've yes. covered a lot yes. of this, but that is for all. That's um, for all. That's for everybody. Yeah, we kind of did. We covered that already at the beginning. Yeah, I think I think that, that to, to answer for Nick, Abu, and, and Nashir from the conversations I had, Nick specifically wanted an optimism and this impossible hope that was going to be dashed. And he also wanted a level of pragmatism. He wanted the thing of a non-ideological ideology. He wanted to be the God that was like, hey, we all have to work together and we all believe different things. So that means some of us are gonna be right and wrong from time to time, right? We're all doing this together. And I think that Abu had this beautiful hedonistic, life-affirming, philosophy and also one of like, maybe our time will pass of not being grasping until the very, very end when he did not want to die. And, um, uh, or, or you get the art when they did not want to die. And um, I think Nashir had this intense contractual law above all else of like our agreements. Like it doesn't matter if you're nice or good or evil or whatever, it matters if you are reliable, if you do what you're, you say you're going to do, if you follow the rules and hold fast to the agreements you've made. Consequences. 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 Yeah. What you got? We'll find out. Okay. How does the matron feel about taking part in this new family? Hmm. Does she feel closer to any of her new siblings now? Getting to know. <gasps> Getting to know. Getting to oh, know. does she like them? Oh. oh, she loves you. Yeah. <gasps> At least me playing yeah. her. Yeah. Um, but we talked about this before. Like she already thought you were great. Mm. Uh, you were one of the few that kind of didn't make her feel welcome at the table. But you know didn't shun her as much as everybody else. Yeah. Um, uh, and I think we, we had a moment, me and the Dawn Father there at the end, she was very uh, of the mindset of resenting him, of just feeling like, why, why should I pay you respect? Why should I look at you as the head of this family? Mm -hmm. um, and then through the course of it, seeing his un unending loyalty to keeping it together. I think she ended up respecting him more for that. Yeah. Um, because having come from mortals into this new realm of understanding, um, she did understand that there was so much more that her and her mortal life didn't get. Um, I think she's one of the, the few that understands both perspectives fully. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, she, she did come away with more of a, a respect, but also, mm, I don't want to give anything else away. Mm -hmm. That's where I'll end it. Oh, there's more. Mm, yeah. Well, do we, do we ask another question, y'all? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 pick in there. I, I, go, go, go a couple, yeah, spoons, go couple rounds. rounds. All right, all right, all right, all right. All right, so oh, boy. Uh, how did Asha end up feeling about the emissary? Uh, can you oh. tell us about the journey of her feelings towards him and the law bearer during the journey? Um, deeply insulted, um, hurt. Uh, yeah, it was. It was definitely. It was definitely. Um, it was. It, it felt. It felt like a vicious betrayal for quite a while. And and the way that and because we had talked about. Uh, the, how we were going to play these gods, and there was definitely early on before the game, yeah. and I kind of enjoyed the way that that uh, the wild mother definitely turned into as we were having these conversations of she's great, she's a bit much. Uh, <laughs> so everyone's kind of like, oh, she's a lot, and uh, you know, <laughs> the two of them, that marriage clearly works, but wow, uh, it's a lot of Issues. like, yeah, it's a lot of like, you know, there's a there's a lot of like, you, you know, just handling each other. Uh, <laughs> yes. So definitely having having a real like getting and like kind of taking out these frustrations on this uh, on the emissary, not really thinking much about what the emissary was or who they were, just kind of treating them a bit like a um, target for their anger, uh, which Poor which emissary. yeah, it, it took a little while for that to change. 
Yeah. That was definitely like, like she couldn't hear when when he was when he was communing uh, uh, with the lawyer. Like she couldn't hear that. She just saw him staring at the image and was just like, "Don't, yeah. Yeah. fuck, like not now, no." What a what an absolute bullseye, Nashir. What Nashir took <laughs> on by playing a character that inhuman and sweet and childlike, but but monstrous. And just like as a player, so honorable being like, I'm not a god, I don't get the god powers. Like, and yeah. and then just like Ugh. speaking, and then That's it's right. like, oh, like mm. you've been so reserved. And then every time you open your mouth, it's a banger. It's like, yes. oh, well, that's the perfect thing to say. Nashir crushed it. It's so crushed funny it. that Nashir played a, a character like that who who wouldn't, couldn't speak yeah. articulately. And, and, and But Nashir was, one of the most articulate of us with like the strongest opinions about what the gods were and, and weren't and just had such beautiful ideas when we were doing the character creation that it, that's why it was like so surprising when, when he came out and was the emissary and, instead. It was and, like, and then like, and like later, later pointed out, and I hadn't really even thought about it, like, of like, of like this, this, the scene on the train uh, was he was like that was the only contact with what was essentially his mother that he ever had had, and I'm like, oh, that's so dark. Yeah. Oh, I don't like that at all. That's he, really now I feel like a bad person. I gave him oh. I gave him a hug when the game was over, and I was like, you're so amazing. And he he had like this sadness about the emissary, and said that in that moment at the end when you know I I got to speak to him as the matron, like guiding yeah. him on. Like that, he never got to meet his mom. Like oh that, all he wanted was to 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 be with his mother. Oh, Love her to be with. Like, yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. He called her mother. He called her mother. Oh, no. uh, it was rough. Devastating. I was like, oh god, I wish I could have given you that moment. Also, I just to just to talk about Nashir just for a, a second longer. I don't know if it came up exactly in the game itself, but he but his idea was that the law bearer specifically made the emissary of ice and stone because it felt like having a child with nature, with mm -hmm. the wild bear, oh. with the wild mother, wild bear. Is that their ship name? <laughs> well, it's also I've just come up. With it's funny because oh yeah, ice oh ice is a, is the is a property of the natural world which creates crystals mm -hmm. that are like perfect the the order uh, the order of meeting nature. That's a very oh, wow. it's romantic. It, it, it later. <laughs> uh, yeah. Lashir just <laughs> so wonderful. So um, that, the emissary that was everything. Um, well, speaking of all the wonderful casts that we had, how is it working so closely with Nick Marini as Tristan Aiden? Ugh. I love Nick so much, and he was such a joy to pair up with, and we had such great Zoom convos. <gasps> did you and have Zoom convos? Yeah, we hands? did. Oh, and just sort of planning. We had so much that we had our backstory of like Aiden and Trist. There was so much that we built that we, you know, there, obviously we weren't going to get to that because that wasn't the full part of, that wasn't the point of the story, but we had so much fun building their story and even so much more of his backstory that, of Aiden's backstory that didn't come out that was incredible. And I think we just had, I had such a good time and also he is, probably the most knowledgeable person I have ever met uh, about this game. You're telling me, Nick Marini's <laughs> been making my life a living hell for 14 yeah. years. <laughs> this man understands game design and building busted characters in a way. Jeez <laughs> Louise. It was, it was it a triple? It was, yeah. a, it was a triple, it was triple, 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 it was a quadruple. Quadruple like, multi-class. To the point mm. where in the player's handbook, he can tell you the page. Yeah. To go to to find what you're looking for. Yeah. I think it's fucked Got up. Building the lily a bit, perhaps. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he he is so fucking talented. It's so it's very yeah. Nick is uh, so talking about like actual play and performance. Nick was I've been playing D and D with Nick since we were kids, since we were like forever and ever and ever. And he's an incredible actor and he's on Cobra Kai and he's done all this amazing stuff, but. I always remember in terms of his performances, he I think is the first person to make me cry in a in a game of D and D. He played a scene where in our home game they went to the underworld, 
and there had been a battle in terms of the marriage of mechanics and story, because Nick is the ultimate mechanical master and the ultimate storyteller, that there was a moment where he needed a nat 20 to save a friend and rolled a 19. <gasps> and there was a death, it was, it was a P, full PC death. And, that, and they went to the underworld and found the spirit and we had the player playing their old PC again and Nick had this moment on this bridge over the chasm of death where he just was weeping and just going like, I'm so sorry I couldn't save you. And you could feel the weight <gasps> of that 19. Oh. You could feel the weight of being one away from what I needed to save you. Oh, that's even worse. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Nick is, yeah, he's the best. Yeah, he's the best. fantastic. I can't wait to play with him again. Yeah. Yeah. He's, yeah. I can't wait to play with him again. He's so good. Um, here we go. Da, da, da. Um, for Brennan, that's me. What was your preparation process like for Downfall? How did it differ from Calamity? Mm. <sighs> well. Good question. Give uh, it all up right give now. Give it all up right now. There are so many mirrors. You, it's so funny you said Marisha was like, you gotta play the matron, because Marisha in Calamity played the character that you had pitched, yeah. and there's a mirror there. And I've often said Calamity is was a story about villains. The Ring of Brass were corrupt city officials. They were bad, bad. They were stealing ether from Dominus, bad. And we watch them on the day where their world is destroyed and they all make the decision to give Exandria a chance. They all make this heroic decision. And then we have Downfall, which is another, it's another, you know, I'm the guy you call when you need a Sky City to crash, but <laughs> this is from a different perspective. We, we're not seeing the god come out, we're watching the gods go in. We're seeing it from their perspective. And I think too that you're watching these gods of light and law and nature and it's the opposite of the story. Of, we talked about this in the character creation of Calamity is here's these villains that have this heroic moment and then here are the gods that have loved mortals from day one destroying. And, and tr the true, it's Atlantis, it's the, it's the mythological story of destruction. And for Matt's purposes and what he needed this to do in, in you know campaign three, it is a moment of horror and you're like, you keep calling us your children, and you're taking our ability to stand up for ourselves and destroying it, and you destroying us. Grow. Yeah, and destroying us in the, in the process. I, you know, f and for me too, that one moment that Cassida has, where she she looks, at, you know, where, where it's like, Abu goes like, you can never comprehend, you can't understand. You know, she's like, you're working with the betrayers, and like, you can't understand. And then in the next scene, the sheer goes like, you know, the, the the emissary is like, do you understand? And she's even as she knows she's dead, is like. You have told me I cannot comprehend, and now you ask me to understand. With respect, make up your mind. Oh, and yes. I remember that. Yes, and I was like, ooh, it hurts. Whoa, 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 whoa. Um, but the the that the, preparing for that horror was the difference. Preparing for you guys to end not on a beat of triumph, but on a beat of horror, mm -hmm. was a very different story. Having that moment with Cassida, and again having that thing of like you you. It's it, and you see the contradiction that the prime deities are wrestling with in Exandria, where it's like we're beyond your understanding. Then why are you calling yourself father and mother? Like if I'm, if you're so far beyond my fucking understanding, why are you invoking the most primal, understandable relationships that we have if you're unknowable? And the for that even that final fight, that was a big different preparation because I was preparing a fight that I knew you guys were gonna win. And in Calamity, I was preparing a fight that I knew they were gonna lose. And <laughs> the, the, but within that, I specifically designed that last encounter to become a horror encounter where you guys are the monsters. Yeah. And, oh boy. and we felt it. Oh, oh boy. my God, right? I felt it. Like that first round, I know that in that first round, everyone's like, no, they're gonna, and as you start winning, it feels jubilant, oh, but yeah. not in a good way. It yeah. feels like. Oh, that was so cool though. Yeah. They can just snap the their fingers at this point. Yeah, it's like, oh, did we ever, did Aeor ever stand a chance? No. <laughs> yeah. And uh, that, that making designing that encounter to be that thing that as those powers start to come out, people watching that are fans of, of the game system are like, wait, this is fucking broken. This is busted. And you're like, yes. You shouldn't yeah. get a ninth level spell every single yes. fucking turn. turn. Yeah. What do you mean really times 10 damage? And you're yeah. like, yeah, time, that, yeah, that's what this is. That's what it is. Yeah. yeah. 
2,000 hit points. I very, loved the idea that all of us came down. Yeah. were so scared of losing that by the time it started to turn in our favor, we became giddy with these new powers. And we all collectively were like, oh, this is amazing, until all collectively went, this is so fucked. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's the, it, and it's the feeling too of you, whatever, the fact that when they were all mortals, they were having a conversation about, we must do whatever we can to, and then suddenly just, yeah. and it yeah. starts to be like, so you thought you could stand against, <laughs> and you go like, yeah, they re a lot of dragons were breathing fire and ice on you, mm -hmm. and a lot of mages were hitting you in touch with wish spells, and now you do times 10 damage and you have 2,000 hit points. And you go, hey, remember when you um, were fucking with me a second ago? And that feeling is, and the, the intoxication of power. I wanted to use game design to make the feeling of the intoxication of power to explain some of the gods behavior. Yeah. Yes. It, it, and it, it was worked. funny, there yeah. was like one moment where I had to do some menial kill at that point and I wanted to I wanted to use the ninth level spell that you had given and I was like, what ninth level spell can I do that's gonna be the most just fucking <laughs> horrific thing? And then afterwards going, all I had to do was like do like a guiding bolt kind of yeah, shit. Yeah, magic you know, missile like, would have done You it. just like knock him out because it's like times ten, happen. it doesn't matter. Yeah. You're a gnat at that point. It's so. <sighs> that was the big preparation. Was was that 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 designing designing all of those reversals of, of. If yeah, calamity being hope in loss and this being horror and triumph. Yeah. I want to see. I want to see the 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 day after they land on Alexandria. That's a game I want to see. Oh, like the the early founding. Yeah, yeah. yeah I want. Yeah. I want to see the turn against against the. Yeah, that's that's a that's another one to put in your head. Some schism. Yeah. I'm gonna read this one just because I like the question even though we kind of answered it. How was it playing the matron, especially after everything you went through as Vexalia? I, it was eye-opening, and I don't hate her anymore. Okay. Uh, what we was- We calling you bitch. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. Sorry. Um, but it's funny, as Vex, like thinking I was gonna just be able to talk her into things. Like I, I really thought I could just haggle my way out of this situation. Um, what was Amira's relationship with Purvon? He was her protector, mm. but how did they find each other? This comes back to the warlock relationship. The matron, as he was her champion, and like let him know ahead of time, guess what, I'm gonna be inhabiting this baby. I need you to make sure this baby Makes lives yeah. until she's needed. So take care of her. So he, Purvon was with Amira her entire life. Oh. He was like another father figure to her. He helped teach her how to fight. And you Fred, felt we that. Break Danny just a little was, bit. I just see another little that. bit of Danny yeah. snap Looking off. Because when he was, when Pervon said, he was like, it has been my honor yeah. to, I, oh. The idea of your deity learning how to walk. And like you helping, Ugh. you taking your deity on like a little hike through the woods and yeah. like teaching her how to teaching fish. Her. And then putting putting her on a city. And, and then putting yeah. her on a city and knowing oh that's my goodbye. God. And knowing that the relationship will never be the same. You know, there's no, no more hugs, that's gone. right? That's yeah. gone. And that there's like a, I also the idea of showing up to wh whoever Amira's mortal parents were and being like, hello, <laughs> I'm here with a contract written by a goddess and I'm here with a um, a number of artifacts <laughs> and yeah. a number of, like. And a giant wolf. And a yeah. giant fucking wolf. Here's a large sum of money. Here's a large sum of money. We need you to live well until. Yeah. Then. There was some murder, but I don't know where I, yeah, no. <laughs> might have, might have, might have misplaced. Yeah, real, real Obi-Wan Kenobi shit. Yeah, yeah, actually very much so. Yeah. yeah. Hey, uh, let's do another speed round. All right, one more oh, speed round. Sweet. Come on. Zoom, 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 Maybe zoom. Maybe your parents just got really into birds. <laughs> they like ran around yeah, the yeah. sanctuary. Yeah. <laughs> so you're gonna have a lot of birds around. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, is bringing the matron in on her shoulder like that early giving away too much? Nah, fuck it. She's good. Oh, I don't know how I would answer that. This one's too hard, which was, uh, how would the wild mother have described the emissary of the law bearer? I don't know. Aww. That's a... It was her la it was her last words. I will tell you everything I about know. that sweet I, and brave I've, boy. I've I've honestly in my mind I've walked away from this character so fucking hard because it was a lot. Um she was she was a lot up there. I was I was uh, I was not functioning well. 
Um, Maybe you don't know. I mean, uh, I mean, the easy ones immediately were would would have been. Um, uh, I'm trying to think of a better word for observant, but um, uh, I would say. Just and kind uh, to a point that more than we deserved Aww. is what I would. That's as far as I will go with that one. Oh, boof. boof. Well, yeah, she was starting to get her normal personality back by the end of the game. So, the, yeah, the once once the wolf had pieced out, it was more the oh boy, I didn't want to do that. That was second. really not pleasant. The second that the, the Nushir had the emissary pop his head out of the crate and go dark, and I was like, Ugh. oh, that's my child. Yes, that's oh, that's, that's my, my baby, baby boy. boy. <laughs> Little baby bean, protect. <sighs> All right. What was the easiest part about playing Trist and the Everlight? What was the hardest? Um, I think... It was the best of times. It was the worst of times. Worst of sure. Um, <laughs> I think easiest, probably... Um, I think it's... I think it was really easy to show love and care for everybody at the table. Because I do love and care for everybody at the table and was just so in love with all of the choices everybody was making and the things that they were, I just, it, that that part was was easy to sort of jump into that part of, of the Everlight. And I think the hardest was having to make any decision. Because <laughs> 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 they all were terrible. <laughs> all, uh, this is, a, I have a brutal one here. I'll do, yeah. these, these are my last two. Did. Uh, did Cassida truly renounce the Everlight in her final moments, or was that? Oh, lie? I don't know. Yeah. I don't want to know. Probably. Was it true? Probably. Should I say? Yeah. Do you know? I mean, I know. I mean, you do. I know the truth. Of whether it was a whether oh, man, it, I don't know if whether it was this. a lie. You can you can co cover your ears if you no, want. No, I can't. I should know. I want to know. Yeah, I want to know too. She did, right? Did Cassida truly renounce the Everlight in her final moments, or was that another lie? Cassida did not truly renounce the Everlight Ooh. in her final moments. Oh. She did it before then. Oh. Oh. Whoa. Yeah. Oh. I know. We I know. knew. We know. Yeah. We, we know. know. We know. It was the, it was the, because that's the that's the whole thing, right? Is it's all about perspective. There was so much of this, which and this is the second question too, which was just the the what were some of the major questions you either wanted to answer or have the audience players ask themselves during this game. Uh, I have I have strong beliefs in the real world, it, but it's very important to me. I think that we don't make uh, when you make art or tell stories that are trying to shortcut to proving yourself right. That's sort of a definition of propaganda, I think. Mm -hmm. And there's, so showing this, there was a lot of complexity. Prime deities are allying with the betrayers. That seems pretty fucked. Aeor seems pretty fucked too. That's a totalitarian state that is killing, it's kicking gnomish women off of ships and it's killing the followers of the gods. But also that city is filled with some people who follow the gods, but it's also filled with people who don't, who are good and don't deserve to die. But those people are in a city that probably if it kills the gods wants to conquer Exandria. So you're doing the math of the gods mostly want to just be alive, but Aeor's bad, so you should stop Aeor. But how bad is Aeor? It's the last hope of mortaldom, but it's a pretty totalitarian hope of mortaldom, but you did, but dip, but dip. And it's the horror of making moral choices with too much power in a moving world with everything horrifying around you. And I think for Cassida in that that moment, right, she didn't know that she'd been discovered by uh, Aeorian, you know, intelligence. She really thought she was going to help. She really thought that if I can make this weapon, like the gods need us. And there's a childish wonder in that, like, what if I get big enough that I can help mom and dad? And they're then gonna love me so they're going to love me so much when I come and, and, and then, but then you realize that same thing, which I think that, that is a lot of people's 
awakening when you look out at the world and you go like, you know, it's with, which is sort of a Castriol who is, I played, you know, for only one episode really, you see this angel, but who I loved as an NPC to play as this angel who's basically going like, you made me to fight a war that to you is a joke. And that's a very real, so to me, I think those were the questions I wanted to, to ask, which is basically, if you're, if you look at the gods, I think you can, and this is the question that, <laughs> I'm gonna go home and you guys have to answer these fucking questions in the rest of campaign <laughs> three, but there's, there's something about the idea of the main question of like, okay, these gods are family. They love each other. What does that mean to a mortal? What does that mean to a celestial? What does that mean to, and again, it's like the funny thing is I almost feel like there's two different, like lewdness is lewdness, but lewdness mm -hmm. is not, the, like, like that's a different, that's a, guy that's one guy right and the other question for me at least uh, that i wanted to look at was just the idea of is the love of the gods for each other the most important fact of exandria and if i'm a mortal do i have to care about it uh that to Ooh. me was was no i think thank you for giving me the crawling king man the minute <laughs> that happened i'm like oh no mm -hmm. yeah oh no this is i suddenly see all the problems here this is real bad yeah Oh boy. Uh, so that, and I think all of you, people, I, 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 I had the best, I had the best seat in the house. I got to watch all of you do something truly proficient, playing multiple character. Everyone put 200 pounds of lore on their back and tap danced through playing a mortal avatar, the god behind the avatar, uh, doing a complicated heist movie, playing 20th level characters for the first time with a whole suite of powers and taking people through an Atlantis story, the destruction, the, 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 the gods punishing hubris and leaving you in this position of, did they do it because they were scared to die? Did they do it because they were saving Exandria? Or did they do it because everything was happening all at once and they had one night? And yes. <laughs> yeah. yes. The answer is yes. Yeah. And the, th the thing that will never leave me is that honestly, there is a world where they could just all leave. And that's, the, I mean, the final conversation, right? Is the, is... Why didn't you just walk away? It, none of this could have happened if you, like all of this is because- but could they? I mean, could they though? They were refugees. They, they were are... little balls of light that got kind of trapped on Exandria when they came into being. That's, oh, yeah. That was my take on it, that when they became that Exandria trapped that that being. I, I the, the 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 feeling I get at this point is that may have been true once, but they are now strong enough that if they wanted to go start over somewhere else, because uh, they talk about some of them talk about like we can just leave and start over, and I I I, I don't think especially the betrayers put that the betrayers put that forward, and I think it's a. I think there's definitely a risk that they will lose some of them themselves. I definitely know the, the, that's a big fear with the Wild Mother, but uh, honestly, I, I think I think if they really valued human life or, or the life on Exandria, that is a thing they would have been willing to do at this point. And that, that is that is the one place where I'm still. You never any time you have option A and option B, like anytime someone presents a yes or no option, my immediate thought is always, are you putting this op these two options forward because you don't want me to think about a third? Mm -hmm. Are you, because because that is that is the narcissist play mm -hmm. of you can either do A or you can do B and that's it. I'm like, well, or I could just not play this fucking game. Mm -hmm. uh, and it, it is it is really always that pay no attention to, to, a, to the complexity of the universe. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I don't know, it's in my head. I like this question because mm -hmm. I feel like this comes directly from Danny because you want to know. How much did Matt tell you about the Matron of Ravens? <laughs> Are you now a keeper of the forbidden lore? <laughs> Matt and I had a very long meeting about all things Matron. Um, he didn't tell me everything, um, but I know a lot. You know a lot more than you did. I know a lot more than I did. I know about um, her ascension. I know about her mortal life. You know how she did it? Maybe. Shit. I'm so happy for you. <laughs> me too, me too. I'm not even jealous, I'm just excited for you. I'm Ugh. like, oh my God, I love that you know it. 
Do we do, do we do more of these? Or nope. we do the tower? We I do the we tower? the tower? But I feel like there's there, there's hold on. There's a que there's some questions on here that we didn't really get to. Okay. That I just really want to just really want to talk about really quickly. Mm -hmm. For one, how much I loved the Betrayer Gods. Oh! Hey. And how you played them. They were so cool. They were so cool. Why did we like them so much? Family. They're so cool. Uh, this, because, because you guys, the reason you love them and the reason people love villains is being good is more complicated than being evil. And when you are, ha, are in moral panic and torture and you watch someone totally unburdened by caring about the well-being of I others, mean, yeah. you go, look, that motherfucker doesn't give a shit about doing yeah. the right thing at all. They're living look their how best life. Yeah, they made that decision. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Look how easy Father Milo, it. my God. So awesome. There were so many moments that reminded me of, of um, What's the face off? You know, <laughs> sorry. I'm sorry. I love action movies. This is based on the downfall is inspired by face off. <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> but like when Nick Cage in the beginning. Just the VHS cover. Yeah. Nick Cage in the beginning when he's like in the in the choir costume. Yeah. And then he like grabs the girl's ass. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't know. It just gave me fun no, in my life. It, it is. I, I mean, it is. It, 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 that that is part of the fun of being a villain is that you've already made your decisions. Yeah. 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 And and the perspective is totally clean. It's it's why it's literally why I I had caution about choosing to play one in the beginning is I was like I I think I said like I don't know if you'll get your Meryl Streep moment of deep emotional wrestling with people who have this much clarity, you know like yeah. the, the, there's yes. you know that there's like. Uh, uh, but I appreciate Milo. So people people saw him as being a priest of the Dawnfather as a troll. I want to be clear: the Lord of the Hells. There's a bit of that cheekiness and mischief to the Lord of the Hells. It's also about how the betrayers hurt the world. And to me, the Strife Emperor, the Crawling King, have these these or the Chained Oblivion. You know, even things like that have ways of hurting the world that are like um, over like overwhelming there's that 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 chaotic evil thing of like destruction rampage slaughter and to me the the lord of the hell I was like if you have trickery as a domain which is also I remember talking to Matt about like how human the gods are and I was like I feel like any god that has trickery as a domain has to be pretty human like you care about the mind and feeling states of other beings, right? Sure. You, you're, you're, you're mapping their consciousness to be able to trick them. So to me, the amount of damage you cause as the Lord of the Hells, if your domain is trickery and you're the father of lies, is like, oh, I know where I can hurt people the most by being the voice of what they depend on the most and being the, like the idea of like, I'm not gonna be some monster in the woods. I'm gonna walk right into the town square and say, I have everybody's answers. And that's where you really uh, sow chaos and discord. My, 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 my favorite devil ever, and I've, I've forced people uh, several times to watch this, is, is Demon Knight, uh, the Tales from the Crypt film. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which is my favorite, it's my favorite devil ever because all he does is just have conversations with people that are all about what they want and about love and about the things that have hurt them and, and how he can fix it. And it is monstrous. Yeah. Uh, and it is a, it is, I always, I always love, and you, you played this, so I, I always love a, a, um, a, a God of Lies who, who just tells a lot of truth. Tells a lot, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I will say one of my favorite moments in the game was between the Spider Queen and oh, yeah. uh, the Archart? Yeah. Archart? Yes. Archart. Yeah. Archart. Archart? When. Archart? Oh, Archart sounds. You were just. Archart? Archart? Yeah. Uh, when Archart. you were. When she was being like a little cheeky with him, mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden comes around with that left hook of like, well, this is all your fucking fault. Yeah. Of yeah. why we're yeah. here right now. Yeah. So you shut the fuck up. Yes. And they specifically have a true. I mean, the Spider Queen and the sort of the, the gods of the elves and Exandria and a lot of like, you know, the, the idea of um, uh, magic and their control over magic. And, and again, too, the idea of like beauty and art, but then also like, um, to me, the Spider Queen of like also taking a lot from Abria and her performance of oh, the Spider. Oh, so good. I really like, I talked to Abria and I was like, how do you play the, how do you do the Spider Queen? And, um, 
her as Amleta being this little unassuming thing that's like drops down from a rope as a rogue from the ceiling. But yeah, I think that hatred of uh, the Archheart in that moment too. Oof. Of, so I think, we, I all, I think we all had a little bit of that of like, this is this is really on a certain. This is kind of your kind of your kind of your is, bad. Why are we why are we yeah. cleaning this up too? And why have you been having such a good time? <laughs> He's yeah. having so much fun with the fact. Wait, can I ask one more? Yeah, I mean from here. Yeah. I'm I mean, gonna, I'm I'm and I'll also say, crawling king. Right holy now. fuck! Oh, okay. that, that, that ruined me. <laughs> that ruined me. The maple, me. like the syrup and the blood in the end. And it was so funny because even in that moment where I, as I'm like, wow, Aor has crashed the like like the. The, you know, it's it's this ultimate that's destruction and ruin, and then you see this thing where it's like that was the moment where I was like, okay, the gods are something else. Like I, the I, the pain and misery of nature. And oh, the, I, I was immediately ooh. like these. This this was this was you know this was uh, uh, you know desire and despair. Yeah. This was this was this was a brother sister. This was clearly and like I immediately figured it was like oh god they were really close. Yeah, really. Close. And I was like, this is going to be the last hug they ever have. Yeah. Because this is the end of the truce right now. So it's just like yeah. one last fucking moment of intimacy before this all goes to fuck. Yeah. Uh, and I love that weird turtle and the hooks. So oh, oh, the I, turtle. I, yeah. But how you're, you oh. like, <laughs> turtle. Just, just to like, yeah. just, just to like brag about you for a minute. Oh, like you had such different behavior with each of the betrayer gods. Mm. Like even we knew who each of them were just because the little things you were doing, the crawling, like the yeah, little the snake coming out, like the tongue. The you just you're real good. Yeah, you're, you're, you're real good. You're really good. It's really fun to play with you're, Brennan. Yeah, oh, I you love are. playing with you. <laughs> this was so it's, fun. It was really fun to play with you. The, I loved and I, I loved that she the, the moments of uh, and I don't know if people knew, but the the when he said like the hooks, he's like I, he's like you have hooks in you too, and I know their names. Uh, he was specifically talking about your family. He was referencing Amaris and Topher Ooh. and Haley. Where he's like, we all have. He's like, because the whole point of him, at, mm. if you understand that even the gods of Ouch. evil are profound revelations about the truth of the world, then they're just the truths that we hate. They're truths that are bad for us, and that yeah. are they're bad news. It's news, but it's bad. And that that for me, the crawling king was like, well, the promise of nature is pain and suffering, and so like, oh, you found love, the thing that hurts the most to lose, like. You know, and and you dumbass, you yeah. dumb. And then the <laughs> and then last we didn't mention on the other hand, pain's, pain is only a moment. On the other hand, over it, here, also yeah. again in yeah. play and yeah. like knowing stuff. I also was it was very funny because obviously you have the ruiner who's destructive and harf and it's the, you know, it's like, and it was so funny because I was like in a mortal body, the ruiner. I was. I did not intend the ruiner to be funny. I promise. But all of Tashar, <laughs> Tashar being like, I can't believe you have more followers than yeah, me. Well, yeah, like, that's so great. And when I, great. I suddenly had this moment where I remember being an improv teacher and talking about. I was like, there is a destructive impulse in comedy because saying the th the pun. It's called a punchline. It shatters a tone, and I was like, "Oh, for the god of destruction to be funny, like how a punchline shatters the tone in a room." I was like, "Oh, that was that was a total oh, that was a oh, surprise." Oh, she didn't show up to. It was just like, "I am so hateful." <laughs> I was like, "Anytime something was like, no, she can take it." And then the minute that that you know you yeah you hit the lobby, I was like, "Oh no." Fuck. Fuck you. Fuck you, you piece Ugh. of shit. Oh. There's so many good questions that you all put together that we didn't we just didn't get to. Um that I wanna know. Wait, what do I do next? Are we doing to the tower? Well what's your other wait? What is the What is the other stuff? We could do we could set wait. a you wanna set a timer? You wanna we could do a little timey. We could do okay. Something else that something else that I that another question that I wanted to know. Did anything about the ending surprise you or your character? Oh boy. I when the arch heart, I'm gonna say arch heart because I like the way it sounds. I better. like arch heart better. Um, you said arch and it I can raise all When way. he flipped it and he decided, okay, I have to do this after Selena, that was her name. Mm -hmm. um, and then you took that, and I think you did, you had to be on purpose, and you brought the whole like cone of destruction through the whole city, and like it was just so perfect because that's what we've been traveling down as this cone of destruction. Oh. And I was like, how the f did you turn that into this perfect, and this is where we are? I just loved it. It was yes. just. Yes. 
Every moment of yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah, every, yes. every moment towards the end of like, well, that won't come back to bite us in the ass. There's just yeah. a series of like, yeah. oh, I know what that is. Oh no. You all watching? I loved the three of you at the table watching Cognosa vanish like, and being. Oh, oh no! Oh, no. <laughs> don't do that! Oh, oh don't do that! That's Whoops. bad. You guys oh, are Lord. dumb. You're gonna be that eyeballs. Was we, yeah, that we, was a cool moment. Yeah. Whoa, we made a mistake there. Oh no. <laughs> yeah. God. <sighs> all right. Well. For plunkies? Or well, are no, we done? I think we're stopping because we talk too much, oh. right? <laughs> it's my I'm fault. I'm not the one Wrong. controlling the prompter. Read, Say read, again. Read, read the prompter. Just read it. Just read it? Okay. okay. You're like, please stop. That's it for the deep dive. <laughs> Which means we're almost done with this very special four-sided downfall, but before we go, it's time for one more round of questions Just from the tower. Random. Okay, I'm gonna go since I didn't do it. We who are You're about to it, die. Peter. I'm doing Salute it, Peter. You. Okay. You're doing it, Peter. I got it, I got it. I love that. I got it, I got it. I got it. So much. Oh, I see, because the balls come out. So bad. Give me that plate. In their own area. Yeah. Oh, no. It's like, oh, no. Oh, my God, we can make it. <laughs> oh, edible Play-Doh is very doable. We could totally do that. Get some food, dye, and some whipped cream. Should what we happened? do that? I feel like we should have a Play-Doh for our kids and create the look piece. That would be so bad. Soundtrack just came out on vinyl, okay. by the way. Woo! Shit. Okay, 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 okay. Have okay. to fight. Have to crow. Okay, okay. And two more, and they're this. all gonna come down. And a little Jericho, bit. Jericho, Jericho. Oh. Hey! Oh, Only one? one? So she's got three in there. It was I got three, I got three. Number 17. 17. Okay. Let us see here. Did she get three? Mm -hmm. From Taryn, so really... if you could have any power slash ability that your character has, which one would it be? We're talking specifically about downfall? Wait, yes. let's get it one more time, because I just saw that there was an earring in here and I got distracted. Sorry. Wait, if you, what? She didn't hear the question. I'm the worst. Was if you could have any power slash ability that your character has, which one would it be? Okay, wait. Is this, sorry, I, I think downfall. 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 No, I know downfall. I'm saying, is it downfall prior to the final fight where we get like our god fucking abilities? Or is it like? I think it's, I think it's, it's only level 20. Okay. <laughs> only. I know only the level. answer to that. What? Um, it would be to heal people oh, because right. I would bring back people that I love that I've lost. Yeah, yeah. My my character can only heal themselves and did a very good job of like that was my power. power. Yeah, was just was just I just was a battery that constantly refilled for various reasons. Although only when there was terrible death around me, maybe not that one. I don't know. Um, yeah, this, the thing about being a monk is there weren't really a lot of superpowers. Yeah. Uh, you could parkour like crazy, I could parkour. Though. Parkour like a mother park. I mean, that really would be a pretty great power. I would path. love to parkour. What would you want? I mean, sure, I can speak with dead. I don't really want to do that, though. I, I would like cool. to be able to turn invisible. Pretty <gasps> solid. Yeah. No, no. That'd be pretty cool. I think I'd be pretty creepy with it, though. Creepy. I wouldn't want to speak with dead. They're just like normal people, but, not, but they haven't dead. done anything in a very know. long time, so they have yeah. nothing interesting to talk about. And they don't have to be honest with you. Yeah, they don't have to be honest with you. I mean, as the matron, they have to be honest well, with yeah, you. Well, yeah, that's a little different. That's, that's true. true. Which, I'm trying to think which which character. Mm -hmm. um, uh, the, uh, gosh, there are so many of them. I feel like the, uh, of all the NPCs. Oh, um, I'd want to be a uh, 4X Tenement and have a bunch of arms. <laughs> That'd be cool. Cool. Just a bunch of Boston shakers in every hand. Get up there and go pick a stick. Vol pick a stick. All right. You've only go. got two. You've got the least amount of marbles. Yeah, everybody else is tired. Still got, I got that one bottle of, uh, of alcohol. Wait, did you turn it? Yeah. Like that. Did any did come out? More marbles no. come out? So it's three, 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 two for Brennan? Yeah. Now he's at four. Oh, jealous. One. What's pick a number? 19. 19. Let's see. Seriously, what is the costume production process for a live show? Take us from inception to when it's dawned. Ty dying oh. to know what the collaboration is like and how things are found from Jess C. That's a great this question. This is something I'd like to, this is someone I'd like yeah. to brag about. 
Jenny. Jenny. Jenny fucking Newman. She's amazing. She sent me I a, love her. She sent and me a Manzi. photo today of and myself. Manzi. Oh, Manzi and Jenny. Jenny sent me a photo of me in my car because we were apparently driving down the freeway oh, that's together funny. and she was just like, look what I saw. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, the uh, yeah. also uh, uh, makeup or Drea the Dres. yeah Dre oh my god the whole the whole it's such a great team I feel like Jenny has such a cool eye for the weird and the strange but also really gets each of our own personal style yeah. she knows our personal style yeah. and then she she understands the characters and like yes. she really wants to understand the characters too like so she'll ask a lot of questions about. You know, what kind of a vibe are you going for? Do you, do, she would asking for the live show, like, do you want this to specifically be for your latest character look, or should this be a general vibe for how your character is throughout the entire campaign, yeah. you know? And so we have a lot of input there. And, and well, and we, we come up with a general vibe for the show. Like, what do we, do we want to do, like, like. Yeah, are we all going look, goth? Are we all. Are we doing yeah. Halloween costumes? Are we doing, yeah. you know, or like for the, what was it for the, for the UK show? It was all rock stars? Yeah, we wanted like yeah. a rock star vibe. Yeah. Yes. And, and we all picked kind of specific, like, uh, genre yeah. hits. And then we hand it to her and say, fix it. Do, do, do. <laughs> interprets this. It's this beautiful, sweet chaos because she's so creative and she has such an eye and such a mind for creating these costumes. And there's always this chaos on the day of because oh, she's like, like we always like sew custom pieces, you know. So they put those two pairs of pants together for you, and mm -hmm. and then She'll I be have like, like I have an idea. And I she's have sewing idea. something on you yeah, as you're going you're on stage. Yeah, you're like together. Like you never know exactly what it's going to look like until you're Love putting it, it all on. Oh, it's the best. Love her. I love it. I love it. Mm -hmm. And She's the great. makeup team. The makeup team. Yeah. And Dre. Yeah, just yeah. stick some glitter incredible. on her head. It'll be great. I don't yeah. know. Okay, yeah, that's great. <laughs> I love that I got to reuse my purple wig that I bought for Jester yeah, for another live show. Mm -hmm. And I loved your makeup. Your makeup was great. It was great. Yeah, your eyes. Uh, I walked out and on right on my way to the stage, I think I saw Danny at the last minute, and I leaned in and I went, "I'm cosplaying as a camera." <laughs> and, <laughs> and, yeah. and my response was. Everyone's gonna get that. <laughs> yeah, everyone's gonna get it. Yeah. Uh, Dre tr truly did. I was, came down and Dre was like, "Okay, we're gonna do some. We're gonna do like a look for you. What are you playing?" And I was like, "I'm sort of playing a magic recording." <laughs> <laughs> She's like, "Okay." And it was like, like being, right. being the kid at the birthday party okay. who's like, I want to be a beetle. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, oh, oh I know how to do that. I can kind of do cats and puppies. I want to be Christmas. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, uh, well, Oh um, I just think we all have to do it again in order to make this consequence even. All right, all yeah, right, yeah. Yep. Fine. Yep. Do it, do it, do it's it. lined up, am I good? Oh, wait, no, wait. Yeah, no, 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 oh, I'm gonna turn it. it. Come on, knock another one down for Brennan. Knock another one Shit. Yes. Shit. Sorry, okay. Queen. Nice. Oh, fuck. <laughs> oh, no, Brennan, you're gonna, there's no way you're gonna lose this, because I don't see how there's another way. I feel like, I mean. <sighs> there's, they're all gonna fall. Why did I come up here? I don't think I need to her go plunk again. Is rigged. Again, it says two to her three plunk feet. is rigged. I think you got it. I think Laura, there's I think only one. Like, oh fuck! You have to keep pulling. You have to keep pulling. Hold on. Blame Kyle. Pain is a moment. This is this is bad. This is bad. Pain is just a moment. <laughs> oh no! There you go. Okay, 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 okay. okay. There you go. That's not bad. It could have been worse. Yeah, it could have been worse. Um, I'll be fucked. That's the. That can't be right. Thirty-one. Wayne. Oh. I'm fucked. <laughs> nice and Jer, your character won a blue ribbon at the local fair. What for? What for? Oh, yeah. What, for? what was their ribbon for? I mean, I, I mean, what? Oh, produce, I mean, but, uh, produce, yeah. Produce. Best guavas oh, or something. Oh, Best guavas. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> it's a very, it's a, very, it's a wonderful, that's a giant guava. An increase in the guava. Or gourd. Yeah. What Everyone loves a gourd. I can't think of a single thing Matron would win an award for. Table Her rhubarb pie, though, you guys. <laughs> oh, I love don't rhubarb. even fuck yeah. around with a rhubarb Wait, pie oh right boy, now. Boy, I don't know. Have you ever seen the table setting co uh, competitions that, that we do at the State Fair oh, in LA? So great. Oh man. Danny knows. Oh yes, uh, I not only know, but I actually played a uh, character in eighth grade in the musical Dear Edwina, who was the fairy fork mother, 
and was assisting, was magically assisting a girl with her table setting competition. Wow. We gotta go back Whoa. to the, we gotta go back to the state fair. It's been way specific. too fucking long. Yep. Our yes, we God did. damn. The world has so God many beautiful so secrets. God damn, you are the best so like, state many, fair partner. So there's so many, many rings. We're, we're in, wait, okay, it's happening. It's fucking all happening. Of, all of Tallison and I's pictures are from the state fair. Yeah, we go, <laughs> we, we go and like, we do a savage burn of the I mean, state fair. I know, wait, we would, I know we would have the same one because you would win for Gilly Best in Show. Yes, oh. for sure. There you That's go. a good one. There you go. Gilly. Get up there and pull. Boom, boom. Oh, wait, you were the well, last one, so you got to go next. I thought, did you, no, 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 did you hear your room? Right. Okay. It's nice. You. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Likely, likely fucking story. Yeah. <laughs> likely fucking story, foul. bro. I appreciate, I appreciate your, you tried. <laughs> you can do it, Tal. Fine, oh, wait, wait. Fine, I still got to turn. I got to turn. Turn, turn them all out. knock another one down. Daddy. I'm trying. Shit. This is Transylvania. Of it. Uh, there. Frankenstein! <laughs> <laughs> Look, I live to serve Laura Bailey and Laura Bailey alone. <laughs> I don't know why I feel like I'm going to be dealing with the consequences. If I only had to pull one, I have options. I know it's going to be fact, I have to I, one Here's to the thing. I felt really confident when Laura was going. Now I feel way less good than I felt as like I'm looking at <laughs> Talison pulling and I'm like, ooh, this could be really bad for me. Nicely off. done. <sighs> Nicely done. Wow. Fair enough. Uh oh, I think I'm in the. It's gonna be me. <laughs> <laughs> Number one with a bullet. Number Ooh. one. Good job, Tal. That I'm was a Here we go. Here we go. This makes my hip This will be an interesting one specifically for downshot for downfall. Downshot? Wow. Uh, oh, <laughs> Cole Pratt underscore on Instagram. Dungeons and Dragons is a game full of tough decisions that have crafted a beautiful story across three campaigns. If you could have a what if one shot or mini series and change a decision your character made in the past, what would it be? Oh man, we've talked about for that. Change it. It yeah, doesn't like, have to be downfall, but I do think it's interesting that this question is coming up uh, during downfall. Change one decision. Change one. Change a decision your character made in the past. It's just a. It's just a what if. So it's like a little mini, it's a little mini alternate universe. I feel like I can answer this. I, I, I will say I probably would take back when Pike took a shit on a bed. <laughs> because I thought it was fun in the moment because Scanlan did it. And I was like, I'll take a shit on a bed too, how fun. I'd probably take that back because that took me down a real dark path for a while. <laughs> Not me personally, but Pike. Yeah, it was like, oh. Yeah, because Matt was like, there are consequences for your actions, <laughs> and now you are your alignment's off. And I'm like, for taking a shit <laughs> on a bed. The, the bed probably, will remember this. Came from <laughs> yeah. Using your mace to slit a guy's yeah, throat. Yeah, I think that was the thing that did it. That probably. I think I it was. Would that, that have happened if, you had if I didn't take a shit on a bed? I think you were feeling a little loosey goosey that episode. So what happened? I was. Maybe I was. I was just having a good time. I don't know yeah. if we were going this low stakes or not. I was going to go way higher stakes. Go, go, mine, go higher stakes. Mine's really dull. my first thought. Mine is. I was. I'm very curious. Uh, I, I'm very curious about the nature of the of the, of the game if, if uh, Molly had gotten through that fight. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. But that's a big, that's a big, like that's not a little, but, that's that's affecting the timeline. Well, yeah, but that's awesome. That would have affected everything. so much. So much, everything. Yeah. Oh, wow. Mm. Oh, wow. Jester yeah. would have had to keep healing. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Maybe it's good that Molly died. <laughs> Oh man, <laughs> that delivery was so was so fucking mean. <laughs> Holy shit! <laughs> um. Oh god. I'd probably go. Ooh, there's so many things. Um, what would happen if Imogen had like given in to Pradavos night is in young. those moments the when she was young. like falling I, deeper and deeper? Night, night is fucking young. Could still happen. I, that's interesting because I, I had a I had one that I thought about for you a lot, which was um, uh, Fentress. Was what if you just said yes? Oh well, yeah. That would have been weird. I lost sleep over that one for sure. Mm -hmm. I was like, I made the wrong choice. I made the wrong choice. I made the right choice. But, you but know. at the time, I was sure I made the wrong choice. I don't know why we're looking at you for this one, but I'd be lying if I didn't say that in private moments to himself, 
the Lord of the Hells did not think to himself, just stay with Avalir until it fully connects to the ground and the primordials are released. I know that you're worried that the Ruiner is gonna get to Vasselheim before you and kick a bunch of ass without you before you get there. <laughs> Don't delegate this task. <laughs> Follow through. <laughs> Stay with the city. Make sure the prophecy happens. Uh, I think I think he probably is. It, he's alone. just like, come on, man. This doesn't strike me as a good delegator, to be honest. Yeah, I think he got. I think he got slap happy. I think he was like, he's like, we're doing it, baby. We got out in the world. So you're saying he uh, he really uh, took a poop on Avalir's bed? I think so. I think I think somewhere somewhere Pike is going. I sh shouldn't have shit on that bed. And somewhere Lord of the Hells is going. I shouldn't have shit the bed. Let me tell you. <laughs> Ah, that was a mistake. You got there this, Ashley. I got this. So actually, sorry. you don't got this, because if you don't got it, that means... Well, I, I feel like... Who's well, got the most marbles? I don't know. This one I'm going to have to have... Uh, like we are we going the... until all of the marbles are, gone, are, are down? Or are we calling it now? Oh. Let's call it now. You don't have wait, to pull. Wait, wait, did are you we calling it, it after no, Ashley? Already... Oh, yeah, did you twist it? No, no Ashley's got to no, go again. That's Ashley's right. You've got a second one. That's right. You have Why? one more. Because you, you only went one. I went first. This is the last pull. This is the last Daniel. pull. Everyone will have gone an even number of times. That's right. And every single one. Danny! <laughs> Danny! <laughs> Danny Carr! Danny Carr! Sabotage! I'm just gonna fall out. Mon dieu! <laughs> I mean, what Sacre am I blue. trying to Sacre even do? Sacre blue! Saboteur! Did she lose yet? If you get one out, do you lose? No, Ashley, you're gonna, you're gonna nail it. I think I've... No, I, I think I've lost already. You're you gonna want pull advice? one and those marbles are gonna shoot advice. back up. No, I don't want advice. Okay. It would be bad you advice anyway. Advice. That's a dumb... Don't this pull is all that dumb. one. Every already, one of them will work. They're coming out. They're all coming out. They're all not coming out, they're all, one's coming out. Two's coming out, three's coming out, they're all coming out. <laughs> <laughs> not all of them. There we go. All right, so Ashley lost. What's the consequence? <gasps> I don't want <laughs> Consequence Latin with sequence. Uh, okay, read this aloud. Okay, sorry. Whoever made the tower go kerplunk the most in episode 26 of Four-Sided Dive must create an in-canon backstory for Bolo <laughs> that includes if how she escaped Avalir, if she was present for Downfall, if she ever got the drinks. Well, we kind of know some of that yeah, now. Weirdly, already. we kind of did. We kind of do. Gotta we don't, extrapolate on we don't know. We don't know how she escaped Avalir. Okay. And we don't know if she got the drinks. <laughs> she did get the drinks for sure. She got them. For awesome. sure, that was like mm -hmm. mission Every numero time. uno. Every time. I think she escaped. She escaped by. I, I don't know, this is too much pressure to have this be canon. Got it. She is you know. a dragon. You know. You know. <laughs> you know. Thank you. She flew. <laughs> Yay, Ashley! Yeah. Woo! <laughs> The she real, she reached out and went, wait a minute. Wait a minute, I'm a, I'm a fucking dragon. I'm a fucking dragon. Oh, wait, fine. and this oh, is she's going so real bad. Yeah. Wait, but if she, and if she, yeah, if she was present for downfall. Which she was. If she was, if she was drink, yeah. So right. she flew away, she was present for downfall, and she definitely got the drinks. Yeah. And we I, all got our drink. I, and listen, yeah. I think that she was, I think that she had a loyalty, even though as a dragon, she had a draconic loyalty to the city of Aeor. She did. And I think that th she was genuinely um, infiltrating the city of Avalir th through a honey pot with uh, Loquacious Seely. She really yeah. wanted to be a reporter. She, <laughs> she, really, she really wanted did. to be a reporter. <laughs> she really did. And the, and the question remains, if, we, it's not established if Loquacious Seely, if Sam's character in Calamity actually ever, because he had been seeing Bolo for a little while. Yeah. So if they actually did smash, they then smashed. he was the bard who had sex with a dragon. They smashed. He, they, they smashed. For sure, you think so? Clearly. Yeah. Yeah. What if she's pregnant before she flew away? Then a half fairy, or but there's a hundred years. Then she shouldn't have gotten the. She could have had. A, she could have hatched an egg that is half fairy, half dragon, all awesome. 
somewhere in the calamity. And that dragon that's in canon is me. And that half fairy, half canon. dragon is Danny Carr. <laughs> my mother was a dragon. My father was a reporter. <laughs> Cool. Cool. <laughs> As they say, cool. <laughs> well, hey, thank you, Taryn, Jesse, Nysinger, and Cole Pratt. And if you have a question for our Tower of Inquiry, you can enter it at critroll.com slash tower. That's it for this very special four-sided downfall. Don't bother looking for a more-sided die for this episode because you won't find it. I want Aww. to thank our guests, Brennan Lee Mulligan, woo! Laura Bailey, woo! Woo! Talison Jaffe, woo! Woo! and of course, our lovely lore keeper, Danny Carr. Woo! 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 I am Ashley Johnson, woo! your 26th Tavern woo! Keeper, and I guess this is the outro. Friends around the table, time to celebrate. It's a party, hit the lights, here we go. go, go. Waste the night away with a little escape. It's a chance to lose control So let's just leave this world behind Everybody come on, take a dive One by one we roll the dice Come on, let's go Critical Roll For another round Your friends are here to cheer you on I, I couldn't I have been you. happier I know. if it makes you feel better. <laughs> My mother was a dragon. My father was a reporter. <laughs> <laughs>